We'll be with you in a minute. Oh. I, gu I, gu I guess welcome to Talking Heads. Uh, we're watching the Blazer game. <laughs> we're still doing this? I thought we were going to wrap up the... I, I guess. I mean, there what's there, 10 minutes left in the fourth? <laughs> yeah, top of the fourth. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and just take a break, guys. Yeah, just... We'll be... No big deal. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, welcome to Talking Heads, everyone. Episode 79. I'm Jeff. I'm Rhett. Your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. Uh, but no, seriously, we are watching the Blazer game. So if I'm a little distracted for the first 15 or 20 minutes, uh, you'll know why. Uh, that's what they get for playing on a Wednesday. I had this slot first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, why didn't they check with you first is what I want to know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everyone. How is everyone doing tonight? Uh, I forgot to bring up my YouTube chat window, so... I know how I'm doing. I'm how are you doing? Great. I'm doing great. Yeah. Awesome. I'm excited to be back. Yeah. It's been like it's six, six, seven weeks, weeks yeah, something like something that. Yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So, um, here I am. Back in the seat. Yep. Co-pilot's chair. Back in the saddle, ready to, ready to rock and roll. I could tell John was getting a little tired picking up that extra weight. So. Yeah. yeah, totally. <laughs> Uh, we already opened a beer tonight, uh, since we started watching the game a little while ago. Uh, this is uh, Deschutes. It's a Twilight Summer Ale, limited release. It's uh, it's a seasonal one they do, I believe, every summer. Um, but uh, 5%, 38 IBU. Very, very juicy ale, yeah. I gotta say. Um, not really like a fruit beer, but but it's a very juicy, very uh, lemonade-like kind of finish on it. Yeah. Yeah, I would say super drinkable. Yeah, I'd say the fir uh, the first thirty three percent of the beer packed with some delicious summery flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, the second sixty six percent of the beer, um, pretty kind of meh to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. But if you're looking for something that you can drink on a nice summer day after a hard day's work, yep, this might be just for you. Um, yeah, I'm not overly disappointed, but would I spend ten bucks on a six pack again? Not if there's some other options there. Right. Yeah, it, it's not the best beer. It's not lighting the world on fire, but I'd say it's a pretty good drinkable summer summer beer. Probably a little bit more expensive than uh, than it deserves to be. I'd like to see it closer to seven. Yeah. I'd say, yeah, yeah probably, honestly, like eight fifty for a six-pack, I would have been right there. Not yeah. much price difference, but honestly, that's kind of where I'm at. It's a good beer. Absolutely. Just a little pricey. Yep. So Blazers lead at 83.69 <laughs> with 9.44 left in the fourth. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Are we just going to start narrating the game? Totally. Uh, this commentary not approved by the NBA. <laughs> uh, I am not rebroadcasting, so, uh... Smart. Uh, they don't have to worry about, uh, prohibited commentary. Uh, anyway. Ooh, and Seth. Seth Curry shows up, hits a three. Excellent. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and all the non sports in the, in There's the already a couple, like, yay, sport ball! <laughs> comments. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm a huge, huge sports nut. Uh, Normally I'd be right there with them, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big Blazers fan, and yeah. you make it into the playoffs, so. Yep. You gotta, there you go. And, and making along. some noise in the playoffs, too. Not just For making real. it, but third seed, taking it to the OKC uh, in the first round. Anyway, uh, yes, I have the game on, but it's off camera. Uh, uh, he does it on the uh, Threadripper build, I'm assuming. Actually, I have it on two screens right now. I have it on my 43-inch 4K screen right here. <laughs> Plus, I have it in a little window right here up above my live view uh, preview. So, yeah, uh, we, we've got it doubly just in case I missed something. Uh, you finished yours. Let's go ahead and open another Please, one of yeah, those. I was hoping you'd say that. Yeah. Let's open another one of those, and then we'll... Uh... There we go. Thank you, sir. You got a glass for it this time, or straight out of the bottle? I don't. I don't think we've ever done straight out of the bottle here. We better get glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to be the trend breaker here. <laughs> oh. So uh, we're near Portland, just so you know. So obviously, we got to uh, drink our Oregon beers and watch our Oregon basketball games that's right if you're new to the show uh yeah we typically do about 20 minutes of beer news uh sometimes it's local sometimes it's it's national 
Um, but uh, 20 minutes of beer news, we get right into tech talk, and it can be really whatever I'm interested in. Sometimes it's processor news or virtual reality. Sometimes it's Tesla or automotive or whatever else. I, I try to keep it, uh, you know, something I'm interested in, because why else would I be talking about it? Uh, and then we usually finish up with uh, some games and entertainment, uh, maybe what's happening in movies, if we're interested. Typically, it degrades into Star Trek talk, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then if we have time left at the end, there will be a little bit of Q&A. Uh, so that's the agenda, two-hour show. Welcome to it. Let's get this party started. Uh, so uh, we reported, gosh, right at the end of February, I think it was like February 25th or something like that, that uh, Burnside Brewery in downtown Portland wow. had shut down. Uh, and they had shut down uh, very, very quickly. Like, there was no, like, rumblings of, uh, yeah. of things going on. It was just literally the employees showed up on a Tuesday morning with locks on the doors, like chains on the doors. And there saying, was a note uh, hanging, yeah. Yeah, saying, uh, saying the landlord has uh, assumed control of the property uh, for mispayment over the course of months. Anyway, uh... We commented then it'd be really nice for another brewery to take over that spot. It's a very nice spot in downtown. Um, and someone has. So a renowned Danish brewery, uh, McKellar, is taking over the former Burnside Brewery space. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, they are one of the largest craft breweries in, in, uh, in Denmark. Um, and uh, they're opening what they're calling uh, McKellar Portland. Uh, they're starting it up kind of as a pop-up uh, <laughs> site where they will be brewing on site. They will be doing a restaurant on site, um, or that sorry, they'll, they'll be they have a full operating bar on site, uh, and then they're also going to do a pop-up restaurant in conjunction with uh, who was that? Uh, oh, yeah. Chef's Table, Chef's Table. It's a restaurant group in Portland, um, and uh, so they'll be operating the restaurant for them. McKellar will be operating the bar. They're planning on having 23 taps uh, of all McKellar brews and uh, and doing some seasonal releases and, and rare stuff on there as well. And that'll likely be the plan for the rest of the year. Uh, right now, it's kind of up to regulatory agencies to allow them to start brewing on the property because they're not licensed to brew in the States yet. They've never done it. And so they've got to clear all the regulation. They've got to get proper cans and proper glassware and proper, you know, set up and make sure they're all good to go. Now, the majority of, <coughs> excuse me, got something in my throat. Let me clear it real quick. Mm. Yeah, me too. <coughs> <coughs> ah, There it goes. I benefits of uh, having beer on the show. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so Huffman of the uh, the Chef's Table restaurant group in Portland actually purchased the property and all of the the uh, the property from Burnside. So they have all the brewing equipment, all the bars, all the furniture, everything already ready to go. Uh, so when they get regulatory approval, it should be a pretty quick startup for them. <coughs> Gosh, how much... <laughs> How many offensive know. boards is Denver going to get? <laughs> that was ridiculous. I think Denver just got seven offensive boards in a possession. Literally just like, tip, nope, tip, nope, goes to the other side. Nope, tip, nope. <laughs> that was crazy. That's one, two, three, four, five, five. Five, five offensive boards <laughs> in one possession. That was crazy. And then, they, of course, they called a foul. Naturally. Yeah. You, yeah. Naturally. So anyway, uh, when they get uh, get approval, it should be a pretty quick operation to get up and going. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> I, I've never known about uh, McKellar's work before, but mm -hmm. just kind of reading through, they're pretty popular. Yes. People really like them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which and the guy seems to have just a real sense on his uh, in his head for the beer business, <laughs> and it seems to really line up with Northwest sensibilities. With Northwest, with Portland sensibilities, yeah. with, uh, he really likes the, I'm, I'm going to call it hipsterish environment, but the, the pop-up restaurant scene and the food uh -huh. trucks and everything else that go yeah. downtown, uh, he really likes that scene and, and kind of embodies that. Yeah. And uh, I think this could be a really good fit. Uh, so I'd be really interested to see uh, what kind of comes out of that. Yeah. <coughs> What's our opinion on Endgame? Uh, <coughs> I have not seen it yet. And so help me if one of you spoils it, I will ban you faster. It'll so fast it'll make your head spin. Yeah. I'll tell you <coughs> my opinion. I freaking loved it. Um, yeah. You know, I've seen like a couple <coughs> negative things, but honestly, I disagree with it all 
Um, I loved Infinity War, and this just felt like the perfect continuation <clears throat> of it. And, um, you know, I told Jeff earlier, so I hope it's not too spoilery, but... No, it's fine. It, it's, you know, it's 10 years worth of fan service packed into a three-year movie, and <clears throat> I freaking loved every moment of it. I could have watched another hour of that movie and been thrilled. Um, so that's, yeah, that's my takeaway. Yep. Uh, Skyfrost Rogue says, Endgame exists. Ah, uh, banned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Jeff? If you don't follow through, they're going to know that you're weak. Right. <laughs> they're going to start actually... You got to nip them in the bud <laughs> right off the bat, man. <laughs> Show them we mean business. That's right. <laughs> uh, make more Linux vids. A couple more are, are coming. Uh, I've got uh, one actually slated to record tomorrow. So uh, more, more are coming. Uh, more service-related videos. More like, what would you do with Linux? Or how do I use my home server here? Yeah. Um, it's that kind of stuff. Don't ban me. I won't ban you. Yet. Not a Marvel <laughs> fan since Disney bought it. What have they done wrong? I know. I know. Like, like seriously. I notice you don't got the rant counter up, so I'm going to try right. to contain it. You, you, know, you know Disney owns Simpsons yet. Are you, are you real shallow on the Simpsons now all of a sudden, too? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, oh, never mind. There's some stuff that I could... Be I'm just out. waiting for the politically correct Abu to come out. And... Uh, that's where I was going to go with it, but I was like, whatever, never mind. <laughs> Welcome to my store. Here's all of my documentation. I have lived here for 17 years. I'm considering citizenship soon. We can't. We can't. I'm, I'm totally waiting for that episode. Uh, it'll happen. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into a little bit of in-game talk, but it won't be any spoilery. Uh, it's more just on the, the economics of... No spoilers of on this show. No, that's right. Unless you're not watching the Blazers game. That's right. Uh, 8675 Blazers, 708 left in the fourth. In which case, you got to know that sports happen in real time no matter where you are, so... All right. <laughs> this uh, next one is exciting. Very exciting, and uh, we might have to try this one out. I, I was thinking the same thing. I, I, as soon as I read it, I went through and found the list of cities. So I was like, really? No, I, I don't think it's going to come far enough south for us. Doesn't matter. Right. We can sort this out. But we out. can go up there. Yeah. Yeah, totally. We'll, we'll get delivery somewhere. Uh, so 7-Eleven, we, uh, we talked about this a couple weeks ago on the show, that in Texas they're trying a, uh, a more cafe, street cafe style uh, shop where they had uh, kombucha on draft and and uh, and a couple other things, uh, as well as some ca- uh, craft beer taps. You could do some growler fills. Well, they are Seven Eleven is trying to evolve what their company is. They're they're not going to get away from the corner shop and the slurpees and the big gulps, but they do want to expand what they serve. And so one of the things that they've experimented with is delivery within some major metropolitan areas. Well. Starting very soon, you'll be able to get beer delivered to your door. Uh, there's a pilot program in 18, excuse me, in 18 <laughs> cities. Gosh, it's too early to start the hiccups. I know. Stop. You want me to scare you? Uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll wait. I'm sure that some Batman of these... dies in Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbledore dies. I'm sure as the uh, time draws down here in this game, you'll scare the hiccups right I'm, out. Of I'm me. sure. Uh, so Denver within nine. Um, so yeah, 18 cities, um, you, you take a look, I got it right up here on the screen yep. if you're interested, but the important one is Portland, Oregon, Portland, sorry, Oregon. rest of the world. Um, so if you're in Portland, get ready to be, uh, ordering some beer from 7-Eleven. That's right. And I also love that they, spe- they specify, they're like, only a few beers are available for delivery. And then if you look at the list... Uh, There's right like 17 about. beers. It's so <laughs> many beers. Now, and a good chunk of them are domestics or the major name. Um, Crafts, how was that yeah. not a foul on CJ? Come on. Come on. Uh, anyway, uh, most of them are the d- domestics. You've got your Dos Equis, your Modellas, your Coronas, your Bud Lights, your Coors Lights, your uh, Heinekens. But you got uh, Dogfish. <laughs> you got Dogfish Head. You got Cell Artois. You've got New Belgium Fat Tire. Uh, Brooklyn Defender. Kona. Uh, Kona. Uh, Blue Moon. Uh, Belgium Voodoo. Mm. Uh, Voodoo Ranger. So your you're large craft beers yeah the, the powerhouses right so uh which i'm not no i'm not upset by that i don't just you know I'm, yeah you guys have seen me drink rainier on the show so <laughs> although i noticed rainier's not on the list rainier's not on this list <laughs> you should write a letter i might have to no it's pretty cool and i love seeing uh stores. and it'd be really authentic because people who drink rainier only know how to write letters it's an old person's beer 
All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Like Ron Swanson in Parks and Rec when he finds out that he can uh, send letters to complain about stuff. Although, does he do emails or is it letters? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's letters. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> well, well he, well, he threw his computer away. You know. Right. Remember? Yeah. So. I can't remember one of the things. He's like, you are masquerading as this posed as this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, I love seeing like businesses that have been super successful in one traditional model, like branching out and doing mm-hmm. other stuff. And like the cafe model was always really interesting to me with 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven is like a brand that is like near to me because like I grew up next door to a 7-Eleven. So I spent as a lot of I. time <laughs> in one, you know, uh, back in the day when you can go and, and get your, God, what was it when I was a kid? Like 75 cent refills on your double big gulps or, and, uh, you know get your two liter pop for 75 cents it was ridiculous but then not only that in japan they're like kind of a big deal and you can like eat amazing delicious fresh meals from a Mm 7-eleven for like virtually no money so Uh, one of my late night favorites to get if i'm driving through is uh, i will stop at a 7-eleven if i need like a soda or something like that spicy dog spice i love the so good do they do some things really well they do some things really well Uh, so yeah, uh, 7-Eleven branching out, uh, in-home delivery of craft beer and, yeah. well, beer in general, coming to you soon. Yeah, check it out. If you're in one of these cities and you can uh, check out the delivery service before we do, mm-hmm. uh, hit us up on Twitter or Discord or wherever you're at and let us know how it works. Yep, and, uh, uh, you order through the app, which is available on iOS or Android. Perfect. So, there we go. Uh, InBev uh, drops its lawsuit against the Heineken uh, <coughs> uh, beer dispensal system. Beer dispensing system. Dispensal? <laughs> dispensal? I wasn't going to say anything. Dispensal. <laughs> All right. Dispensal with the nonsense. So that's, that's right. That's right. Uh, so uh, Anheuser-Busch has dropped its lawsuit against Heineken for its uh, – uh, beer delivery system. Basically, they're trying to get away from using kegs, uh, especially in, in Europe, as uh, they're pretty heavy to transport. They take a lot of infrastructure to be able to get from place to place. Um, so uh, what they had done is they basically uh, brought in these plastic containers uh, with uh, with bladders inside of them that contain the beer. Mm. They then pressurize the plastic container with CO2 and squeeze the bl- the, the bladder up. And so rather than adding CO2 into yeah. the, the open tank, you're adding it to a contained vessel and just pushing a, a bladder of air up. And supposedly it takes a lot less volume to do. Yeah. So your your delivery costs are way down. Uh-oh, nuggets within seven. Yeah, it seems like a little bit more like environmentally friendly. I mean, not the plastic part, obviously. But... I love they throw up this out. Sorry. Uh, offensive rebounds this quarter, 12 for the Nuggets, zero for the Blazers. <laughs> well, five of them were in one possession and you didn't get any points off of it. <laughs> like, is that really... Yeah, they got... <laughs> is that really a stat to tout up there, TNT? That's always my favorite things after, like, a game of Rocket League or Dota or Counter-Strike yeah. where you go and you, like, deep dive into the stats. Yeah. And, like... Without the deep dive into the stats, you might look at one player and you're like, wow, that guy was a true champion. And then you look at this, the real deep dive statistics and you're like, oh, that guy was a joke. Right. He got he got six shots on goal. Yeah, but they were between another guy who got six saves and the ball went da 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 or like Dota, I love like when people count like, you know, they're only looking at their like KDA ratio. Yeah. And like one guy is like, well, I only died one time. So my KDA ratio is like astronomical. But then you look at like damage dealt to enemy players right. and it's like nothing. Yeah. You know, <laughs> or, or time spent like pursuing team objectives or something like that. It's like, come yeah. on, dude. Anyway, so the beer delivery system, uh, Anheuser-Busch was already using it. Heineken was trying to introduce their own version of it. Um, and, and AB was suing. Uh, well, they are no long, uh, Heineken is no longer going to be importing that technology into the country, so AB has dropped their lawsuit for now. Uh, it will be very interesting to see if this technology becomes patentable, licensable, yeah. uh, if it kind of takes off, because it is a great idea. Yeah. To me, it seems like such a dumb thing to fight over. I mean, I yeah. get it, like, but... You know, why not revel in revolutionizing the beer transportation industry? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Seems like a win-win for everybody. Exactly. You can deliver more beer. We're going to drink more beer. Yep. Uh, Nobody likes moving kegs around. That's right. I've had I've had to move a few. They suck. Yeah. Even, even empty, they suck. All right. 
Look at that, 20 minutes on the nose. Probably makes getting your own keg for like a house party or something a lot easier. A too. lot easier. Because I wonder like- That's a great point. Because are, are you going to be like putting a deposit down on something like that? Like maybe, mm -hmm. but it's definitely not going to be anywhere near what you got for a keg at your own. Like, right. That's ridiculous. At, the, at that point, could you even make it disposable? Right, exactly. May as well. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, seven bucks for the for the box in the bladder. Yeah. I mean, I'd totally do that. Because right now, it's like 40 bucks to deposit for a keg. Yeah, yeah, for a good price. Yeah. Otherwise, it's more. Yeah. I think last keg I got, the deposit was like $65 or yeah, something. Yeah, and, and that's not And that's for a full keg. Right. But yeah. Yeah, pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Anyways. 20 minutes on the nose. And we had the Blazer game going. Hey, <laughs> what did we say at the beginning? We're on top of this. You want to roll it back and check? That's how good we are. That's right. That's right. All right, on to some tech news. Here it is. Yes. Uh, this one I am particularly excited about. Uh, I've mentioned quite a few times on the show, and we've done a fairly lengthy video on the subject. Uh, VR. I am all about VR. And second-generation headsets are... Coming, yep. uh, very very quickly, in fact. Um, so today, so May first, uh, or was this May, th April thirtieth? April thirtieth, I went live. However, they're actually available for pre-order on May first. Right. Available shipment uh, on July first. Expected July first. Okay. Touch okay. So it was off. today. I I, yeah. I read the story yesterday. I couldn't remember if they went live yesterday or if they went live today. Anyway, uh, so uh, Valve Index. Uh, Valve's answer to the Oops. Rift uh, that is coming out later in May. Yeah. Uh, Pre-orders went live today. Uh, so it's a brand new headset, uh, and they are aiming for the top of the market. Three by CJ. Uh, <laughs> three fifty three left. Blazers go up ten. Uh, Valve is definitely and and has always aimed for the top of the VR market. They want to be the absolute best you can buy, but it's it's going to come at a price premium. Now, these are no longer being manufactured and sold and marketed by HTC. These are actually made by Valve. Oh, wow. Um, whereas before, HTC was called Steam VR, but uh, it was a... Woo. What was that? That was weird. <coughs> um, <coughs> it was a headset that was made by HTC in conjunction with Valve. Now Valve has taken it all on themselves, probably because HTC has made it pretty clear they don't want to be in the market anymore. They they want to sell that off if they can. Uh, so anyway, uh, what this is is a five dollar headset, two hundred eighty dollars for the new Knuckles controllers. Not a five dollar headset. He was close. I said five hundred. I'm pretty sure you said a five dollar. We'll go back and check the replay later, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I said five hundred. Five hundred dollar headset. I think it was quick. Uh, maybe you were just yeah going roll. Five hundred dollar. Five. Okay. Yeah. And when you say it like that, I rolled it I'm, off the tongue. I am gonna wait for chat to report on this. So. Did I, did I say five or five hundred? That's what I want to know. <laughs> so it's a five hundred dollar headset, pair of controllers. Not to be confused with a five hundred dollar headset. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> pair of controllers for two hundred and eighty bucks, and uh, a base station is gonna be one hundred and fifty bucks. So all together, mm -hmm. it's all gonna be about a thousand dollars. Actually, it looks like you can get. A VR kit, which is a headset, two controllers, and two base stations, a thousand bucks. Right. So Valve still selling at a premium uh, on what should be some pretty inexpensive. Uh... Def say five dollars. <laughs> oh well, you knew what I meant. <laughs> I knew what you meant. You knew what I meant. But I didn't want everybody to get really excited <laughs> and just go blow down Valve's doors trying to get a five dollar headset. Uh, Can you imagine all the angry emails? They're like, Craft Computing said that your headset was $5. Let's just dispense with all the criticism right now and, <laughs> and move on. Fair enough. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> anyway, $500 headset, uh, which you can buy standalone. Yeah. And it will be backwards compatible with the old base stations, the old HTC Vive base Sweet. stations. Um, you can also get the Knuckles controllers for $280 for a pair. And those will also be backwards compatible. However, the new base stations are the Lighthouse 2.0s, and they are much improved as far as distance tracking, nice, uh, and uh, and interference, and uh, and that is a much wanted and needed upgrade for a lot of people. Sweet. You can get the entire package together: the headset, two controllers, and two base stations for one thousand dollars. 
And honestly, <laughs> like, just looking at pictures, I'm digging the aesthetic. Like, what, yes. like, you know, if, if you want to take aesthetic into your buying decision. It's an attractive headset. It looks headset. pretty sweet, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, uh, it's just, it's always kind of fun seeing what people do, so. And plus, the uh, knuckle controllers don't look half bad. I mean, mm -hmm. the design's pretty minimalist, but... Uh, We've known kind of what they're going to look like as far as what basic functionality that they're going to have. Right. I do like the uh, the swipe bar on the thumb as well as Pretty the joystick. Slick. Pretty slick. That is a, a major upgrade from the trackpad on the HTC Vive <laughs> uh, controllers. Um, the the HTC Vive controllers worked well enough most of the time. However, yeah. they did eventually break down. Um, I had some touch sensitivity issues near the end of their life. Uh, they do still work, but they're they're definitely a little finicky and worse for wear at this point. Um, although they were probably worn by 500 people over the course I, of six months. I was literally just about to be like, well, honestly, you let drunken strangers use your equipment. So I, like, I, I totally did. I totally did. Yeah, my headset's been on over 500 people's heads yeah. in its lifetime. It's kind of hot when you put it like that. Yeah. You know? It gets around. It gets around. I remember the you always had like the different like face shield yep. things. You'd swap them out between people. Because swap them the, out with alcohol swabs in yeah. between. Yeah, because people just sweating their butts oh, off, God. especially when you had the racing league going, man. Oh, that was fun. People <laughs> would get sweaty, even me included. And, you know, I'm not a sweater by any means, but what did me in was the motion sickness. That just destroyed me. So. Uh-oh. Yeah, Denver trying to make a game of it. Oh. Did you want to look at this, too? What the hell is this? That's the uh, Vive Web, or the... Uh, Valve. Valve's website for gotcha. the Valve Index. So take a look. So, so there's the website. Da, 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 Again, attractive looking headset. Yeah. Oh, uh, whoa. Yeah, much. That looks like uh, what Daft Punk would be wearing. Yeah, exactly. I, I want an external facing OLED screen so I can do the whole Daft Punk thing with it. Wouldn't that that should legit? totally be an upgrade. Wouldn't that be legit? Valve, if you're listening, or any third party, party uh, manufacturers, if you're listening, I would totally buy a Daft Punk uh, That would be awesome. Face Think plate. about it. Oh, my God. What's the company that does our LED, our little... Oh, Pixu. Pixu? Or Devoom. Devoom. Yeah. Devoom. Yep. Yeah, we got to get partner, uh, get Valve partnered up with Heck Devoom. Yeah. Heck yeah. Just and do some pixel art displays yeah, on the front of that? Yeah, you can right on your app, too. You can do whatever you want. Oh, yeah. Why not? I'd be down. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, spec-wise, uh, I believe it's it's a small bump in resolution, but they are using OLED screens still, and they've bumped them all the way up to 120 hertz. So they're definitely shooting for the top of the market, both price point and spec-wise. Yeah. Uh, the reason I say they're bumping up to the top of the market is Oculus seems to be catching a little bit of flack for not going whole hog into the top-end VR market. I think they're making the right move. I, th I think they're both the right moves. I, I, th I absolutely do. Um, yeah. You need something that's accessible. You need a mid-tier. You need a high-tier. And right now, you can't have one company make it all because it just doesn't exist. No. And, and there's not enough resources, and they're not selling enough. So yeah. you really do need to... Early on, you need to put all your eggs in one basket until you have an ecosystem that wants to buy into these systems. Right. I kind of think Oculus, personally, is going into the technology that's going to pay off more. Like anybody, I guess, can go and make like the next best high quality headset and trackers and all that. But Oculus is the one that is choosing to make the all in one system. Rodney Hood probably just hit the dagger. <laughs> I will take that. <coughs> uh, by the way, Blazers have hit six for 16 three pointers uh, in the quarter. They are shooting 38%. Mm. If, if one cares. Do you care? Let mm -hmm. us know in the chat. I care. You should care. I care. Although, yeah, I forget the, how like wide-reaching this show can be. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, we we have uh, viewers in Croatia, Korea, Japan, Australia, UK, Germany. Uh, these are just uh, countries that I've seen in chat that I'm naming off the top of one my head. One time we had a guy. Uh, Norway, Denmark. We had a guy one time paying for his super chats in rupees. That's right. Uh, yeah, sure we had we India. had India. Yeah, we had. <laughs> I do have quite a few Indian uh, viewers as well, uh, especially on Twitter. I have a lot of uh, Indian-based uh, Twitter followers. Nice. Um, so yeah, uh, Japan. Japan. Woo. Woo! <laughs> but Jeremy. Yep. Uh, anyway, so uh, Oculus also announced their brand new headsets this week, and yeah. uh, and they're. A little bit lacking on features, but they're also much more aggressive on price points. Yeah. 
Uh, so we have two different models from them. One we knew was coming and the other which got officially announced uh, last week. So we have the Oculus Rift S, which is the second generation Rift, which is the PC based one, um, which is still going to be Steam VR compatible, but also be able to use the Rift Store, Rift Launcher, whatever. Yeah. I forget what they call it. Um, slight bump in resolution. They're going up to 1440 by eye on two screens, but they're down to LCD screens uh, which is criticism number one from a lot of people. And criticism number two is they've gone down to 80 hertz instead of 90. Not a big deal in my opinion. No. Honestly not. Uh, LCD technology has come quite a long way in the three years since the Rift first launched. Yeah. And uh, early reports are you don't notice a difference. And in fact, we're able to get lower persistence of vision out of the newer LCD screens than we can get out of OLED screens. Three years ago, OLED made sense because of that low persistence of vision. The, the flickering displays where your display is only on for a split second, so you don't get any blurring effects. You don't get any of the, the, the warping or distortion or anything like that. Um, and, uh, and you ended up with a much better experience. It's the same story with LCDs today. LCDs have a faster persistence of vision. The other thing is 80 hertz versus 90 hertz, it's not going to make a difference. That that's that that's a negligible. I feel difference. like if, if they went claim, down to sixty, you have you have my attention. But. I feel like if you can claim the know the difference between ninety and eighty, that you're somebody I don't like. Mm -hmm. Not and, saying that you're not out there, but I'm also saying I might not like you. <laughs> Argentina, hey yo, checking in. Uh, also, the Valve Index uses LCD, not OLED. I thought I had seen they used OLED, but maybe I was mistaken. Might have been confusing that with something else. Anyway. Regardless, um, they're regardless. doing something to... So, thank you for the correction. But By the way, Argentina. Hello. Hello. Fellow... Way south of me. Yeah. Like, like draw a line straight down and... Wow. Welcome to the show. Uh, You're ooh. very close to Antarctica compared to us. We got a fight. A little bit of a dust up. Holy crap. Murray going to Enos Cantor. Wow. I wish I would have seen what happened. Cantor's a pretty physical ball player, so. Oh, it looks like uh, Craig got hit again. Uh, Craig broke his nose in the first quarter and is back out and playing again. And I guess uh, Murray took issue with uh, how hard Enos came and uh, made contact with him. I think. Yeah. Boy, I don't know. Sorry, Skull. I, that's a weird one. Oh, sorry. Argentina's on the other side. It's uh, Chile. Per Chile. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're the Midwest. Argentina is where the famed movie Starship Troopers begins. That's right. When it's hit uh, by a giant uh, bug-related asteroid on Buenos Aires, where the Pope is also from. Um, so that's kind of neat, I guess, if you like the Pope. Yep. But also, the only good bug is a dead bug. <laughs> so, you know... Do your duty and enlist now. Yep. <laughs> That's right. But anyway. Uh, anyway. What I think is great about this is that they're just doing something for the everyman. And they're lowering, lowering the barrier of entry. <laughs> Talking about Oculus, not the Blazers. Right. <laughs> Oculus is lowering the barrier of entry for people like me who want to get in on VR, but can only do so with the help of their friends, Jeff. That's right. <laughs> So, anyway, uh, Rift S, uh, slightly higher resolution, LCD screen instead of OLED, 80 hertz instead of 90, uh, but inside-out tracking, uh, but, uh, what was it, a 499 price point? 499 uh, yeah. 500 bucks. For, for the full Where kit. For everything. Yeah, which is, again, like you said earlier, super aggressive price model. Right. Now, I am curious to see, same thing that I said about the Windows Mixed Reality headsets, is what is the tracking like in a full 360 of the play space actually both start at 399 399 so excuse sorry, me i thought the i thought the that's right was rumored different. prices was 39 or yeah. was 499 yeah that's right um i am curious to see with inside out tracking on the rift s what is the tracking like behind my head and in areas that normally only a base station would pick up that is outside of the line of sight of what the headset can see because that does matter in a fair number of titles, yeah. a fair number of the more popular titles. Uh, think of Beat Saber. Think of you know uh, that one. You can get the 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 motion and and it'll pick up just fine. Sure. But in games like 
uh, super hot where yeah. I literally am like reaching for a gun back here and it's not in my display. Uh, sometimes I would lose tracking in that. Yeah. Think of a space pirate trainer where I've got a yeah. shield up and I've got a gun and I'm trying to do this movement. Maybe it won't track. I mean, think about the trick shots that Jeff did in Arizona Sunshine. Behind the back. Yeah. That's not going to track. No. So so there there's something to be said for ease of setup for, uh, for inside-out tracking. There's also something to be said for the accuracy of what Valve has been doing with the base stations and has been the, the market leader on as far as tracking accuracy. Kind of the gold standard. I mean, I didn't believe in VR until I'd used one of those types of setups. Mm -hmm. So... But the Quest, I'm excited about the Quest. Yeah, the Quest is the interesting one here. I, I think the Rift S is a nice evolution of it. I don't think it's necessarily truly a second gen headset. No. I think it's going to fall a little bit short of that in it, reviews and in, in whatever else. It almost feels just second generation of the first generation. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Is that a thing? Right. Like, it, 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 it's, it's an evolution, not a revolution. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of what I was trying to, yeah. to say. Um,. Whereas the Vive Index, I think, is truly a second-generation headset. There, there are market improvements over the first yeah. in in ergonomics, in control, in tracking, in space used, in in refresh and resolution both. So, whereas the Rift S, I see it kind of as a more of a marginal step. It's yeah. better, but it's not the the next leap that I yeah. kind of wanted to see. And neither one of them are wireless, and I'm kind of disappointed by that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, speaking of wireless, the Rift Quest. Yeah. Or Oculus Quest, excuse me. This has been something I've been excited for since... I was really hoping to see it at uh, CES. I, I was hoping to get into Oculus. I couldn't get a schedule with them. Uh, we will certainly be hitting yeah. them up next year. They weren't on the floor was the big thing, too. They so. they had a presence there, but it was in one of the suites, and, and I couldn't get a, yeah. a, a scheduled time with them. Yeah, so kind of a bummer. Yeah. But this is exciting for VR technology. Just going for the all-in-one system. Uh, looking at complete, well, not necessarily wireless, right? But it's all completely um, self-contained within itself. And they're looking at, I think they got a lineup of like 50 games right now that you're going to be able to use on this. Thing. It's an all-in-one, so you got y your console, I guess, for lack of better terms, or your computer, with your headset and your trackers. So you're not going to need to run any fancy cables up the ceiling like Jeff used to do with his nice retracto system to your <laughs> PC that's mounted you know, underneath the desk over here. Right. It's going to be on your back or something, no, right? Like, no, the Quest. It's oh, in the it's headset. all in the headset? It's in the headset. Holy crap. It's put on a headset and hold the controllers. Mm. Yeah, it's wireless. So yeah, my bad. this I, is what we wanted the Virtual Boy to be. Right. I mean, th and this is only taken 30 years? Yeah, 25. 25, yeah. yeah. What was that, 96? I, I want to say, say Virtual yeah, Boy. Somewhere around there. 95, 96. And we're there. Yeah, we, made it. we finally made it. So, Look uh, at me, Ma. <laughs> yeah. I made it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, completely wireless, PC free, and actually a really good slew of games coming out oh, for yeah. the Quest ecosystem. Uh, Super Hot, Beat Saber, uh, Arizona Sunshine, I believe is coming. Space, Space Pirate Trainer. Space Pirate Trainer. Um, a lot of what are considered the VR AAA titles are going to be on the Quest. Yeah. And it looks like it's got the power to run them with the Snapdragon 835. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know for 400 bucks might be where you start. I don't know. That gets you into like Nintendo switch territory. Yeah. As far as, far as pricing goes, as far as like a mobile entertainment system goes yeah. and, and it's been proven you can sell in that price point as far as a standalone gaming set goes, uh, whether it's a, 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 a game boy or a Nintendo switch or a, not necessarily a Wii U, right. uh, but a PlayStation Vita. Uh, sold pretty well at that price point. One so, thing I'm curious about is like, how is the game market? I'm, gonna I'm work? working on finishing up, so so Rhett doesn't have to be thirsty anymore. Yeah. You can all calm down and chat. How I'm is the game it. marketplace going to work with an all-in-one oh. system like this? Like, at the moment, uh, Oculus is going to be selling games directly through their store. So you gotta, but okay. So here's the thing, though. Like, what if? So it's obviously you it has to be titles that are going to be compatible with the Oculus Quest. Mm -hmm. Wait, PC... Oh, sorry, that's the Rift S. Yeah, that's, that's the Rift S. So, but like, if you already had some VR titles mm -hmm. somewhere, say, I don't know, Steam, 
How are you going to be able to I don't do think that? those are crossover because it is a different OS. It's a different, a different account. O- I gotcha. Right. Okay. So if you already own some games on, on the Oculus Marketplace. Right. Now, on the Oculus Marketplace, I believe those will transfer over. So if you're already in the Oculus ecosystem, I believe your your accounts yeah. may or may not transfer. I don't know that yet. That makes sense. Why not? But uh, if you own Space Pirate Trainer on one, it makes sense that you don't it on the other. That's um, but crazy if, but, if not. But as far as Steam, Steam is a different platform. Yeah. So. Well, that kind of like does change things for me a little bit. But I guess in that regard, you just got to start considering it as a, as like a console in a way. Exactly. So. Because, you know, how many times have we bought a game for one platform and then had to buy a game for another? So multiple the, multiple times since I bought a Switch. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not the end of the world. It's just something to consider if you're looking at getting into it. Diablo 3, Rocket League. Um, Who plays Diablo 3 anymore? I, I bought it. I, I haven't played it. I had to. <laughs> I had to. I haven't played it that much on the Switch. And honestly, it, I, I, I found it a little bit lacking on, yeah. on that platform. It's fun, but it's not. It's still Diablo three, and I'm still a little lukewarm on it. And my friend pl- still plays Diablo two, and we were doing the math on some of like the randomness uh-huh. for the item drops. And there's like one item in that game that takes like two and a half million hours of playtime on average to drop. Mm-hmm. So like what? <laughs> Pretty wild. I don't know why people would do that. There. Oh, you don't have to finally, be thirsty anymore. You finally ready? Oh, here we go. Oh. Blazers so ball. Last, Lead to well, seven. 13 seconds left. 13 seconds left. Yep. Uh, let's see. Oh, I also bought uh, Moonlighter for the Switch. Right? It's fun. It's it's a fun game. That was one that only... Re- I mean, obviously, we kind of on my radar when it came out, but we got a pretty thorough hands-on with that at PAX. Yes. Yeah, I talked to uh, one of the devs of that game. And that I was... wish I could remember his name, and I think I lost his card because he was actually... Uh, he was the writer for the game. Yeah, that's right. I always wanted to get him on Game Dev's Quest, but I lost his card. <laughs> so it's really sad. That would have been cool. That yeah. would have been a cool interview. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Um, Looking at chat. Red is awesome. I wish to know more. So, Blazers tied it up. One to one. What does he wish to know more about? I, I think you said something early on because someone else said that up in chat. I want to know more. Hmm. So I don't know. Sorry. I don't know about Disney or something. Come on, Jeff. No show rant. last week. Now this. What What now this? This is a good show. Oh, because we're watching B-Ball. I, I gave the occasional update. Blazers won. And oh. Hey, now we're, oh I sure. wish to know more. <laughs> okay. God, I'm so stupid. <laughs> I didn't catch it either. I was looking at the time. I was like, that was a while ago, wasn't yeah. it? Anyway, we haven't been here that long. Nerds watching basketball. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, I feel so stupid. For I watch football too, totally, and hockey, and reference. soccer. Screw baseball. Well, rub it in. I like sports. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Just kidding. I do things outside the house. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> I used to also follow sports. Esports. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, can we please? Yes. Let's please. <laughs> uh, let's go with this. So this is. Founders Dirty Bastard. Uh, it is pretty much known as here, I'll swap ya, as one of Founders' more affordable brews, but quite good. Uh, so oh, look at that color. Eight point five percent. There's no real description in here. Thirty IBU, but uh, uh, butterscotch malty. Stop smelling it and start pouring it. I'm working on it. It's about the experience. Is it? It's a, it, yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes it's just about drinking the damn thing. But That's thick. That is bold. Mm-hmm. Full-bodied. Rich. Get that butterscotch <sighs> you're talking about. Mm. Mm. I can taste the barrel. Yeah. So good. Yeah, if you haven't picked up one of these, um, I, I got these for about $2 a bottle. You can get these for about $8 a six pack if you don't have a really good bottle shop that sells them individually next to you. Uh, this is an amazing beer. Cheaper than mine and better. <laughs> <laughs> Not to bash on you, Deschutes. I love you. Yep. Uh, how about Jeff thinking he's John? Am I right? <laughs> Why? Because I can review beer too. Multifaceted, multi-talented. <laughs> Poor 
John. All right. You don't got the haircut, though. So, so is the beer a Founders Edition? Ah. Uh, <laughs> How's the game going? Uh, games, yeah. We're tied 1 1. Blazers won by 7. 97 90. All right. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> well, I was. And apparently I was trying I, to hold the show down, Jeff. And apparently I'm getting heat for it. It was. It, I only lost the plot for about two minutes. You're fine. That was fine. I, I, I thought it was fine. Uh, anyway, uh, so VR headsets coming out very soon. Uh, Pre-orders are live for both. Uh, the Valve $1,000 packs already sold out. Uh, wow. Yeah, they're gone. Uh, which either means everyone bought them or there's not a lot of supply. They had 50 units. Right. So it's one of the two. We don't know yet. We'll find out. Um, the Oculus uh, went up for pre-order on April 30th and will be shipped on May 21st. The Valve will be shipped on July 1st. There you go. So that's what we know. All right. Moving on. Uh, Elon Musk is in the news for a couple of different reasons. Wait a minute. Huh? Elon Musk? Yeah. Oh, SpaceX. SpaceX. Yeah, right. he, he, he owns the damn thing. <coughs> oh, I'm over here trying to keep the show down. I was talking about something else. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> His name is mentioned in the next one as well, but I put these two together because they go together because the dude owns both of them. Are we, are we caught up now? Are we good? Are we good? All right. <laughs> I, I'm really not being that harsh to him. <laughs> No, not at all. Not as harsh as he should, as he should be after that. I was like, wait a minute, bro. You skipped it. Oh, no. Elon Musk. Oh, wait, SpaceX. That makes sense. <laughs> so stupid. Try to catch up. <laughs> so. So SpaceX is in the news, and then Elon Musk is in the news in the next story directly, in a story directly involving Elon Musk. Uh, so SpaceX received FCC approval to launch 1,500 satellites for their Starlink program. Uh, Starlink is basically a rural and remote uh, broadband internet initiative uh, being headed up by SpaceX. They're trying to launch 1,500 satellites to bring broadband internet to third world countries, remote areas. Maybe you live a mile out of town and can't get them to drop you a fiber line. Places like that. Um, and they're trying to be affordable with it. So the first step in this process is to get Regulatory approval from the FCC, yeah. which was granted earlier this week. There you go. Give you an opening to talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the whole story. That one broke. I know. There's nothing real else to it. There's going to be a couple of real short snippet stories in here, which uh, don't have a lot of bearing. Um, Look, everybody's talked about an option like this for a long time, and I'm not sure like where other people are with their initiatives, but SpaceX has approval mm -hmm. to launch this many satellites for this program this could be huge right i mean this is the first step of connecting the world wirelessly right and that's and it not mattering if you have infrastructure near you that's the right big one and to me what that, like what's crazy about that is like that's like next generation homo sapien in a way right you know what i mean it's like we're kind of there right now where people but can, only if you live within, like, right. in our area, a mile from I-5. And what's special about this is that there's technology that allows you to leap over uh, developing infrastructure to support technology. And, like, we see this with cell technology where people in really remote areas, they can skip over laying down phone lines. Right. Or laying down, um, you know, broadband lines or whatever and go straight to having 4G and cell phone coverage. Yep. Now, this is going to well, be... What, no 5G-E? Right, yeah, there you go. AT and T. We're getting there. Yeah. Woo. Five G. Whatever. Five G E. Five G. Not five G. We're kinda almost like, there. Kind of like the first step to five G technology. Kind of like AT and kind of like AT and T's G that they launched uh, before four G was a thing. They just renamed uh, their three G yeah. service something else. Marketing. Um, yeah. I, yep. keep, I keep seeing those ads everywhere. I forgot what you were talking about. Five G evolution. Up. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're Shut still up. on LTE. We freaking know what you're using. Shut up. I'm here to watch Endgame. I don't want to see your stupid commercials <laughs> again. Um. Anyway, yeah. So it's kind of cool. It just could it could mean a lot of like development opportunities or not development. That's the wrong word, but uh, for really remote areas on the on the planet. So yep. pretty exciting stuff, at least to me. Yeah. I'm I'm very excited because I don't want to buy a house in town. <laughs> right. And, and now you don't have to. Right. And I'd love to get I mean, I, I don't need a ton of bandwidth. I, I need fast enough bandwidth and I need it to support what I do. 
but I don't care if my video uploads in 30 minutes versus seven minutes. It, it's of no consequence to me. Yeah. What I do care is being able to get the video uploaded or being able to do a live stream or being able to do these other things. I don't mind waiting five or 10 or 20 extra minutes for something to download to work on it. it it's never been uh, a, big deal. a deciding factor for me. Yeah. But 1.5 versus gig, yeah, we're, we're gonna have some words there. Yeah. Uh, so the, the fact that there's an initiative out there to bring broadband internet via satellite to areas that are more than a mile outside of town or don't Further. live or live in county land or, or something like that within the United States, I'm, I'm speaking, but then you get to rural areas or you get to, you know, middle of nowhere, Montana or, or Utah or, you know, anywhere in the Midwest yeah. uh, where you're driving through and there's literally nothing for about 80 miles. You could get broadband internet there via satellite, maybe have a 50 meg, 50 meg down, five meg up. Perfect. That's what, that's all you Perfect. need. And <laughs> you don't know what you're living without anyway. So. Right. Right. Uh, so yeah, Pretty very, exciting. very big initiative. I'm excited to see it kind of, kind of taking shape. Yeah. Uh, in Elon Musk news, are you happy? Yeah, I am. Okay. Thank you. In Elon Musk news. Uh, so this has been kind of brewing for a little while. Uh, Elon Musk has been in some regulatory trouble with the security exchange commission for a number of months. And it's because of his Twitter account. Uh, they believe that because he is the C was the CEO of, of Tesla, uh, that uh, him making statements regarding Tesla via Twitter count as official statements of fact to shareholders. And uh, it wasn't of issue that he was releasing, uh, well, quarterly uh, projections are in and we're looking really good. It was the issue of him tweeting out things like, Felt cute, might go private later, don't know. <laughs> Just got approval to take our private shares down right. to our, our already secured funding. Yeah, secured funding. Felt cute, yeah. might go private later. Oh my god. Right. Uh it was it was things like that, which I can see the SEC's point absolutely. You're 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 messing with shareholders at that point. Not that, that is a really it's not even a fine line. There's a black line and da drawn down the middle of the paper and you can't cross it. Uh, he was kind of crossing that line. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, a new agreement between the SEC and Elon Musk. And that's all tweets must go through Elon Musk's legal team before they are allowed to be tweeted. <laughs> tweeted was the most appropriate term that I could think of that, oh, well, that meant to tweet. Said? Tweeted? Yeah. Twatted? Yeah, there you go. That's Elon Musk. So maybe, yeah, but, maybe. Yeah. But no, you know, what's funny is just seeing his Twitter over the last several months. Like it feels appropriate. Right. If you're a shareholder. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and again, me, I think he was of... flirting with the line, but again, the line is pretty defined as far as sharing information with shareholders or enticing shareholders with false information. Right. Or, or things like that. So he was flirting with the line. I'll fully admit that. Uh, but yeah, all tweets from Elon Musk must now go through Musk's legal department. Uh, to verify they do not contain any relevant stockholder information or information that can be perceived as as uh, relevant to stock to stockholders. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Interesting, <laughs> interesting news. Yeah. He gets to decide what's appropriate or not, and the SEC gets to decide if they went over the line or not. So, but, <laughs> but his tweets now have to go through his legal department first. Which I just find hilarious. It is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, did you ever get a chance to see him on the Joe Rogan podcast last time he was on? Yes, I did. And he got stoned? Yeah, of course. Although a lot of people are like, he didn't get stoned. He was just... I'm like, no. That's he, a man who gets stoned. He was stoned. That's a man who gets as stoned. As soon as it started hitting him, he just stopped talking. Mm -hmm. That's what rookie stoners do. They just like stop talking about stuff. He was like had to get pressed to like actually speak and give answers. And he he just became so chilled out. It was ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's funny to me. Reduced to one-line answers. Yeah. So what do you think about the... Yeah. Okay, you know, and, and then Joe was like, well, you know, like, you were talking, you were scaring a lot of people with this talk about the singularity. And he goes, Joe, we should be scared. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, he's just given all these, like, really vague, really cryptic answers that in his mind, I'm sure, seem like, he's just like, Joe, don't you get it? They're coming! It's gonna happen to us. We gotta do something. But in, but then physically, he's just like physically, he's going aliens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, right to repair news. Ugh. Yeah. So we reported on uh, California 
uh, filing uh, a bill that would uh, enforce right to repair. And that was big news because, well, Apple lives in California. Um, they call it home. They have to abide by all the state rules and regulations. Um, Apple has apparently been having private conferences with lawmakers. Yeah. Dissuading them from right to repair legislation by, and I quote, telling lawmakers that people will hurt themselves if they try to repair iPhones. Isn't it great because it doesn't that have a feel to it? They're like, we're running out of ways to convince them. Right. Think about the people. Won't you think of the children? That's where we're at. That's exactly where we're at. Uh, Apple's argument is, number one, there's lots of sharp sides and we might cut our... Uh, Users may cut themselves on the delicate innards of the iPhone, damaging yeah. both the product and, and their, themselves. And the inside of an iPhone is a little bit more complex than what you might expect. Right. And, uh, and, and uh, which is kind of like Jerry telling, uh, <laughs> telling Beth, or, or the vet telling Beth and Rick and Morty that I'm sure you know that uh, a deer's insides are, are much more f fine and delicate than, than, that a of a, than that of a horse. And you need yeah. my... Pretty similar. Uh, yep. And of course, the big one to me, which is just laughable. The lithium-ion battery. The lithium-ion yeah. battery. They could, they could set their houses on fire, which I was told literally if Apple touched my phone with a uh, third-party battery in it, that they could level a city block. That's what I was told in store by the Apple Genius when I was trying to get them to repair my, my iPhone 6S Plus before Battery Gate happened and all of a sudden it was leaked that, yeah, we're reducing battery life on your phone uh, before the cells die to prevent cell death, but we're the only one who's authorized to repair the battery and, and, uh, and we charge $130 to do it and I wasn't going to pay that for a phone that was three years old. And then uh, I got told, oh, we can't touch the phone because it has a third-party battery. And I said, well, why? I'm asking you to look at what's going on with it. Yeah. And I said, well, I, I'd i be taking the lives of myself and everyone in this store into my hands if I opened this phone and you did something weird with the battery. Yeah. That's what I was told. Uh, anybody who's dealt with Apple Care, And, and you'll notice I no longer own a single Apple product. Right. Uh, yeah, big surprise. Yep, because of, uh, of that. Uh Anybody who's dealt with Apple Care or their like fixer teams, whatever they call them, knows how just garbage yep. they are. You take your iPhone in to fix the screen, and then they come back and they just say, "Oh, I can't fix this. The warranty's void," or blah 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 blah. Water damage or something. They just make shit up, and then you take it to a third party fixer, and it's done for half the cost <laughs> and half the time, and you're good to go. Like this is the thing, and luckily, so in this story. Apple and these other big tech companies are sort of representing themselves through this, uh, this like lobbyist group called CompTIA. And, you know, so Apple's not directly lobbying on their own behalf, but all of these big tech companies are funding this. Company. Right. It, it may as well be called the, Apple and other big tech companies. Apple plus HP plus LG plus, yeah. plus John Deere plus. Yeah. I don't want to let them off. Of <laughs> yeah, John Deere, you jerks. <laughs> anyway, uh, so they're representing themselves, you know, through this lobbyist group. And luckily, there is some counter lobbyist groups out there that are mm -hmm. doing a lot of work. And them and a couple other lawmakers have come out and, and just said, like, well, millions of people do repair iPhones. And they seem to do just fine. Yep. So what? Yeah. Which is the obvious answer to this thing. They're saying, like, we're too stupid to fix stuff ourselves or whatever it might be. The, the, the save, How about save us from ourselves argument. Let us assume that risk. I'll, I'll, I'll go you one more. Are we allowed to work on our own cars? Yeah. There's regulation in place that says I can work on my own car. I can go buy every single bolt and nuts and fastener and cable and whatnot for any car that's made within the last 10 years and literally assemble it in my driveway. Yeah. And then register it and drive it on the road. Yeah. That's legal to do. <laughs> yeah. And are you telling me I'm not liable to hurt myself during that process? Oh, I guarantee there's a lot of areas I can hurt myself. There's just so much to be said about this, but... I'm too stupid to own a, a hydraulic jack. You know, I could kill myself under the weight of the car. Yeah, you could. I mean, let, let's take dangers where they actually exist. Right. And that's what blows me away. Like, okay, maybe you puncture the battery, but, mm -hmm. like, I want to see the statistics of emergency room visits for... <laughs> Apple iPhone lithium ion battery. Well, there are no repairs by by unauthorized third parties right now because so the uh, statistics don't even. <laughs> no one repairs their own iPhone right now. Are you, are you kidding me? 
Yeah. That market doesn't exist. And let me tell you, the people that are fixing their own iPhones can't afford to go to the emergency room anyway. So. <laughs> they don't have insurance. Oh, too true. Hey, I'm right there with you guys. That's right. Um, you want to talk about dangerous? How about not fixing my iPhone? I cut my hand on my iPhone screen when it broke. I had an iPhone 4S. Yeah. Dropped that son of a gun right on the ground in a third world country. And I picked it up. And I was like, well, it's still, oh, God! And I had a shard of glass sticking out of my thumb like that big. Don't ask me why I ran my thumb over it, but... Looks fine to me. But see, my current phone is, has a cracked screen. I, I know, I was noticing that. Yeah, later. thanks. Yeah. It really makes me happy. I can tell you that story later. But I'm running my hand all over this all day and nothing happens. You know why? Because it doesn't suck. Anyway, thanks, Apple. Yep. Thanks, Apple. Anyway, uh, because of Apple's latest argument, uh, it has become clear to California state legislators that the bill will not pass, and so it has been pulled from the docket. Unfortunately. So, Apple wins this round, but uh, vote with your vote, people. Vote with your vote. Vote with your vote. Without getting too political, vote for people who agree with your philosophy and uh, whether they're party affiliated or not. Vote for people that don't only value their own pocketbooks. That's a good one, too. There's a lot of people on both sides of the aisle that value their own pocketbooks, so yep. take that advice how you yep. will. Vote with your vote. That's why you have a vote. This next story made me laugh. This one made me chuckle. Because I literally followed your link, and I read the whole thing. I was like, wow, this sounds really cool. Like, why... why? And then I was like, huh, by the time the ending of the thing came along, I was like, how do I get one of these? And I started looking at the prices, like, never mind. And right. then I realized, oh, I couldn't even back it if I wanted to. Oh, it's been closed. Oh, my God, it has 1% of its goal. <laughs> so Energizer uh, wanted to come out with the longest lasting phone of all time. Uh, it was the P18K, the world's longest lasting smartphone, boasting an 18,000 milliamp battery uh, for days of freedom on a single charge, quote, end quote. Quote, end quote. Uh, they launched this campaign on Indiegogo as well as a couple of videos here and there, one on YouTube, one somewhere else. They were doing a Twitter campaign and whatnot, trying to get notoriety for this product. The problem is the damn phone was two inches thick. I'm not even joking. It was... It's this thick. Um, this is about as thick as I can tolerate. Right. And this has a case on it. Right. So. Yep. There's there's my current phone. Oh, look at me. I don't use cases. I don't. Well, I don't blame you. It's actually kind of cool. Yep. That's really cool. It scratched all the hell, but it still works fine. Dude, so. Whatever, dude. When Neil deGrasse Tyson was on Joe Rogan's podcast, he's talking about like. Oh, I, tra I, I travel a lot less than you. I'll, I'll, I'll give well, it Well, yeah. And then I got to put my th my phone through. Look, it made it a long time until this broke. And I don't yeah. even know how it broke. I'll tell you about it after the show. Yep. Um, but two inches thick. It's too thick. Two inch thick phone. I don't, I don't care how long it lasts. Day. Oh, and it's using uh, smartphone hardware from about 2016. Yeah. Was the other uh, nail in the coffin. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Although, was I the only one that thought the pop-up camera was like a clever design to get rid of the... I think it's clever. Yeah. To, to do a bezel-less design. I thought yeah. that was cl cl clever. Because everybody talks about that. But the thing is, they had plenty of room in that phone to put those internals in. <laughs> yeah, true. So, that might not be the solution to go with if you have an essential phone or an iPhone or a, whoa, 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 or a Galaxy. Why'd or... you point at me and say iPhone? I, it was a gesture. It was okay. a gen you it, was, point it, it was a this. Got it. Got yeah. It. Yeah, it was it was right. one of these, not one of these. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'll let it go. You're, no big deal. We're good. Yeah, we're good. You just got really defensive I all just, of a sudden. Yeah, I just. Okay, but we're good. Okay, so. we're cool. We're cool. We're cool. But still, everybody good. Everybody good. Okay. Okay. Are we good? We're good. Okay. We're good. We're good. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> Energizer launched this Indiegogo campaign. Uh, it was up for thirty days. It got one percent of the funding. Fifth. Fifteen thousand dollars out and of fifteen thousand and five. Oh, so sorry. Fifteen thousand and five, out of a desired fixed goal of one point two million dollars. Eleven people. <laughs> eleven backers. Eleven people between them had fifteen thousand dollars to drop. Yep. If I got eleven of my closest friends together, we couldn't get fifteen thousand dollars together to do something really cool. Yeah. Like higher sugar rate. No, I'm just kidding. Bad joke. Uh, that's 
And I like how Where are you going with that? I don't know. There was a, there was a comic who did a whole bit about how like he was he was testing out the average cost of a funeral. Uh huh. It's Chris Hardwick. Why am I hiding this? Okay. You know Chris Hardwick. Yeah. Uh, Chris Hardwick did this whole bit after his dad died about how, like, he took the money that his dad had set aside for a funeral, and he was like, what fun things can we do with this money for a funeral? And he realized that he could hire Sugar Ray, charter a plane, and fly over the Grand Canyon to, like, dump the ashes over the Grand Canyon. Yeah. That's way better than what your dad had in mind. Right. Right. And they're just like, put me into the ground and say a few words. It's like, no, 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 no. You heard of this band called Sugar Ray? Yeah. Flying over the Grand Canyon. That's right. Buckle up. That's right. So, (laughs) that... But anyway. Dad, we're going to have some fun when you pass. <laughs> yeah. I apologize now. But you're going to enjoy it, trust me. Uh, <laughs> could you imagine? I hope that does happen. I hope it does too. Uh, but I just love that like 11 people were like, wait a minute, two-inch phone? I'm Give there. One of those. <laughs> I'm there. I'm all about that. And they weren't even like, I'll invest $1,000 into this. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> They're Average like, of 1200 a yeah. pop. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, a thousand? No, no, no. Let me give you an extra two hundred dollars on top of this farce. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, I there was some things about it when I was reading it. I was like, oh, really? Oh, sorry. Thirteen hundred sixty-three a pop. Thirteen sixty. Uh, sorry, I had. I, I knew the math was wrong. I had to yeah. check it. Well, you suck at math, so I get in the ballpark. That's all I need. But anyway, it boasted like 50 days of like sleep battery life. Yeah. It boasted like you could oh, watch. Hold on. That, that picture is amazing. Which one? The, the, oh, the... right. The, yeah. So on the right is your 15,000 milliamp <laughs> smartphone. On the left is your 10,000 milliamp power pack along with a already really thick smartphone. It looks like an iPhone with a battery case on it. And they're like, look, it's less thick. Yeah. First of all, do you carry around a power bank? No. Does any of our I I viewers... do keep one in my laptop bag for when I'm traveling. Okay. Um, and it's it's a it's a fifteen thousand milliamp, so it's it's pretty beefy. Um, but it's literally for if I'm in the airport and I need to charge my phone or I need to top off my camera or I need to do yeah. this or like that. Yeah. So like I carried one when we were in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Never used have, it. Yeah, I might have used it maybe once yeah. in the hotel. Right. <laughs> when right. I was like, it's too far to have my phone on the wall and use it. Right. <laughs> Total first world problems. Yeah. But this, this is what's wild about it. Is they're like, look, it's the same thickness as a power bank. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It just it just gets me. And I will say the like pop up camera thing. I was like, whoa, is this the future? When I read it, because again, it took me until I read the whole campaign page yeah. to realize that it was discontinued, not happening. Yeah. Um, yeah, the pop up revolution. That's what they call it. Yeah. I almost feel stupid now. <laughs> You, you would have bought one of these. I was, well, look, I said I went up and looked at the prices. I was like, yeah. what do they want? A hundred bucks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? Well, they have the early bird specials. You could have gotten one for five ninety five. dollars Yeah, I could have. But see, it's like, it's like me when the Nokia phone came out again. Mm-hmm. And when they did the whole like classic Nokia design mm-hmm. with like the unparalleled back. I was almost like considering getting one of those just like, just because. I will say the Motorola Razor is on my list when they the, cuz they've got a couple of versions of that one of them with a foldable screen so it's right. a full flip up screen and then you flip it over and you have another touch screen on the back. Oh, I see. So kind of like the Samsung so like, fold but done right. The like new Razor. Yeah. Right. So yeah, they, they've introduced that concept before. I'd be totally interested in one of those. Yeah, sure. Why not? That's interesting. That's interesting. This, you know, I was just looking I was like two days of video, 100 yeah. hours of music. Yeah. Oh my god, you know, and then of course why do you think this failed? Is it the is it this the tone deafness of the design in general? Like two inches thick? Yeah. Is that the only reason alone? I mean, one point two million dollars. How did they think they were gonna get that? I I think they thought they had the next big thing. Which is with sad the pop up revolution. Like <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. Uh, so I've, we've got three quick uh, rapid fire yeah. stories. Uh, so Anki, uh, A-N-K-I, the uh, cute little robotic uh, maker and AI company. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They don't want to be known as a toy company, Jeff. They wanted to be known as a robotics and AI company. I gave them AI. You did. But what have they made? They made a damn toy. I, all right. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. You are what you are. <laughs> 
I gave you AI props, but I'm also going to call you a toy company. Anki, the cute little AI toy company. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter what they want to be called anymore because they're dead. Um, I wanted to be more subtle than that, but you, you forced me into that. So sorry. Uh, I, I have no tact. So. Anyway, uh, so yeah, they closed their doors as of today. Uh, all 200 employees have been laid off. They got one week's of severance pay and they shuttered their doors. Yeah, you know, and I do feel bad. The only reason I said what I did is because at the bottom of the article, it was like the old CEO of the company. He was like, look, we wanted to be known as more than a toy company. Mm -hmm. We were more than a toy company. However, that's yeah. what we're going to be known as for now. Quote, for us, it was never meant to be a toy company or even an entertainment company. It's a robotics and AI company. Mm, there you go. Yep. Uh, you know why your company failed? Because you wanted to be what you were not. Right. And you never not were that. I will say the robot's cool. I've seen one in person before. They were neat. They were very neat. Sure. I'd like to have one, but it wasn't worth what was it the three hundred or four hundred dollar asking wanted? price? What is so? What is like so? Their big their big flagship product, of course, was the Cosmo, which you can see on the right. on the picture. Uh, it's this little guy right here. It, it's a little Wally esque character yeah. that so, kind of like, wheels around. That was the your... price point. I mean, where do you buy one of those? Uh, you could get them on Amazon. You can buy them at Fry's or Micro Center or whatever else. So basically, it was like a little Wally type How character. How long up there? Forever. No. I love Wally. How long has that been up there? Uh, quite love a while. With me. Quite a while. You're lying. And that shelf's been up there at least three months. Jeff does this thing. Wait a minute. That wasn't there either, though. It wasn't there when we shot the VR video, but it was there shortly after. I don't know. Jeff does and this thing where he realizes that I'm just like out of my element, and he's like, I'm going to mess with this guy. That happens regularly. Because, like, how long has the dinosaur been up there? Uh, that has been there about a month, so that that is new. Okay. The dinosaur is new. Okay. I'll cut you some slack then on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Pit boy has been there. Vault Boy's been there for months and months. Yeah, I, I mean, feel my, like all the rest of the stuff has I been mean, there since, they, like, day Actually, one. no, my, my chess set. God, how long has that been there? Since I, I hung in. that I hung that shelf since I moved in. And yeah. the chess set and all the CPU boxes have been there. That's been there since PAX. Yeah, I was going to say Little Medusa. We probably came back from PAX and you put it right up there. Right. Uh, I was still downstairs when we got back from PAX and the like two weeks after I moved upstairs. And so that's been there since we got back. But Vault Boy's been there since November, I want to say. Wally's been there since day one. Okay. Wally's been there since day one. I feel like you're messing with me, but all right. Fair enough. Anyway. Regardless, that's what you're looking at. A Wally-esque type Wally -esque AI robot toy. Wally-esque toy. Like toy. Um, Cosmo. And uh, I was asking something about it. Uh, what does it do? What is it? Yeah, what does it do? Uh, basically, it was a toy that interacts with your smartphone. You could play games with it, both physical and, and online on your phone. Um, and it would drive around and give expressions and kind of be like a virtual pet companion plus AI plus game all in one. It was kind of the goal of it. Okay. But it so, wasn't Something like a Wally Tamagotchi. Okay, that's that's a cool pitch for it. Did they? That's how they pitched it. Oh, they and did. it's a cool device. I think it was just priced outside, and it was very niche. It was who's going to buy this for their six-year-old kid to enjoy? This person's parents. Right. the The six-year-old who also has the smartphone already it yeah. is whose parents are going to buy. Doesn't it. he look like he has a smartphone already? He looks like he has a smartphone. I don't want. Looks just... like his parents named him Hunter. <laughs> I was going to say Skyler. <laughs> <laughs> S-K-I-L-E-R. Oh, my God. Please don't. I can't. Anyway. I can out basic you, no problem. <laughs> you almost, like, hurt me when you said that. That was a problem. <laughs> but anyway, so they shut the doors. They shut the doors pretty quick. Yeah. And I know that they were having some shortfalls, like, the last two years when it came to profit, as is highlighted in this article. But um, they kind of realized that they just weren't going to make it. Right. And they... Pull they, the plug real quick. They had some funding that was kind of pending. It fell through and they went, we're out. I think their big claim to fame was like uh, like five, six years ago or something like that. They had a, like a robot that was mm -hmm. on stage with Apple. Right. And, uh, you know, I think after you're on stage with Apple, you think you're just going to be a, like a name, a, like a household name. Right. But uh, I yeah, never. Yeah, because they, they were at one of the iPhone launches, either iPhone 7 or iPhone 8, if I remember one correctly. Of them. I, I, I don't remember, to be honest. But wasn't the nine because they skipped that one. Thanks, Apple. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, before this, I had never heard of Anki and I felt really bad. But I, you know, just did the little usual Wikipedia deep dive and yep. read up on it. And yeah, it's kind of a sad story. But honestly, like what it, I can't help but wonder, like, what did they expect? Yep. 
I mean, when you hear the words like "we wanted to be more than a toy and entertainment company," but we made a toys toy, but we made a toy for entertainment purposes. Like, well, that's what you are, and you haven't done anything since. Right. So yeah. It's just, it's, anyway. It, it's not like you're Elon Musk and you sell a not a flamethrower. We're not a flamethrower company. Yeah, that, you're not a flamethrower company. That that marketing makes Anki, sense. you're you're a game and toy company. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yep. Not a game and toy company. Yep. Uh, anyway, uh, Jaguar and Land Rover have uh, teamed up with the IOTA Foundation. You don't have to say it like they say it on Top Gear. Jaguar. Yeah. <laughs> you can say it like an American. Every time I use an American pronunciation, I get I get obliterated in chat oh, and in comments. Is that right? I'm I do. So sorry, I'm just setting you up for failure. It's Ubuntu. <laughs> Seriously, they take issue with Ubuntu. Like I take a six or break. I, I, I had a comment in my last video of the Scythe Shuriken, um, where it's it's Shuriken, not Shuriken. It's 2019. Learn to learn the Japanese pronunciation. And all I could think was Chris Farley in my head going, Mother of mercy, I don't speak Japanese. I take a six-week break and I come back and all I, all I can think of is just setting you up to get roasted in the comments. Right, right. So I use American pronunciations and I don't apologize for it. Uh, so Land Rover and Jaguar, the, 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 the big silver cat, uh, uh, are teaming up with the IOTA Foundation to do something a little bit interesting with selling your data. Uh, so make no bones about it. They're still going to be selling your data, uh, both how you use your car and uh, as well as where you're driving it. But they're also going to be collecting road information. Yeah. Where are potholes? Where is traffic happening? Where, where are the slowdowns in your commute? That kind of thing. In, uh, in compensation for your data, so they're going to pay you in cryptocurrency. <laughs> Which is the dumb part of the headline. Yeah. In practice, what they want to do, not in practice, maybe in theory. I think, like, in theory, what they want to do makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's a practical thing. I mean, human beings generate so much data as is, so why not take a little piece of that off to, like, benefit you? Right. But when you hear the headline, like, why not just give you money? Right. Or why not... I like this idea of like, you know, obviously... Give me car like, cleanings and oil changes. The smart wallet idea makes sense. Right. Here's some... And I guess in essence, that's what it is. And if I can like, cash that in... Right. Yeah, exactly. But if they're not going to accept cryptocurrency at the dealership, that's a problem. Right. Exactly. So this idea, yeah, get your car wash. Pay your parking uh, your parking fees and Ooh, your bridge tolls. I and, like that. Well, yeah, I think that's what they talk about doing. So the, all these ideas, like... You, you you go into park and maybe you just boop and your car goes, all right, this is paid. Good to go. I think they even look at like charging fees for like electronic charging stations. Mm -hmm. um, bridge tolls, road tolls. All of these things can be paid out of your smart wallet, but your smart wallet, you're getting paid in cryptocurrency. So right. it does not, like you said, the dealership is not no going to No cash take, value. Right, right, exactly. So... I mean, I think as we start stepping into this, the future that we have in front of us, this idea will become better. And right. we're only making fun of Jaguar and Land Rover. La Jaguar, Jaguar, Land Rover. That's why I said it like that. Jaguar. Um, I, we're only making fun of them because they're the first to do it, it sounds, I think. Could be wrong about that. But also, this idea of just, again, it, 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 it's in the headline. Earn cryptocurrency as you drive your car. Yep. That's not going to sell me a car. Right. Certainly not going to sell me a Jaguar. No. Might sell me a Honda Civic. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, sell me like an economy value car. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yep. But I'm not going to, like, you're buying a Jaguar Land Rover, you can already afford your parking fees. You can already afford your bridge tolls. You can already afford your car washes. Maybe I'm overstepping here, but... But uh, I think in theory, I really like the idea. And I really right. like the idea of our information that we generate as a species going sort of towards the common good. But is it going towards the common good? I don't know. Well, it's not really, there's only one way to find out. I mean, obviously, maybe other Jaguar Land Rover drivers will be able to, uh, what did I say? Jaguar Land Rover? I hope I said that. Uh, drivers. You, you said $5. <laughs> I I feel a very similar situation happening right now. 
Um, <laughs> but maybe only Jaguar Land Rover drivers will reap the benefits of this like congestion data or pothole data or any of these things. But but the idea in general of all this information kind of going to the, towards the greater good, that's a great idea. And maybe earning a little bit of something so that you can go down to the car wash. You can mm-hmm. go to the detailers. You can go to these places. You know, how about these places where you go and you want to just get your tires pumped up? You know, granted, you can go to an old school service station and ask them to do it for free. That's what I do. But in larger metropolitan areas, that's just not an option. So yep. you got to pitch four quarters in and get your air. Why not be able to just whoop, swipe something on your car and you're good to go and fill up your tires? I don't know. There's a lots of uh, lots of good ideas there. The cryptocurrency thing is just what to me sounds like they're like, hey, what's trendy in 2019? Hey, Bitcoin's failing. And what is the cryptocurrency? That's what I don't understand. I remember like reading this, like trying to figure out, yeah. you know, is it going to be the Jaguar Land Rover buck or whatever? Like, is everybody right. just making their own cryptocurrency now? Like what? Crypto Jag. Right, exactly. Right. Like, what is the cryptocurrency? I don't think they say once in the entire thing, but I only skimmed over this earlier. So. Right. Uh, and then I love that the blog ends with a about Jaguar Land Rover, and yes. then they give like a is history. UK's largest automotive maker. Yeah. Uh, okay. Like, yeah. As if we're reading this and we don't know. Right. <laughs> Jagcoin. Jagcoin. Yeah. Jagcoin. Uh, a couple of good comments here. Uh, these are cool ideas. Just make it a perk of ownership rather than a variable cryptocurrency middleman, and I think that's a great point. Yeah. Either give me money or don't. Don't. Or give me like in-store credit, which which is a finite dollar amount, five dollars for every yeah. six days, you know, a dollar per day of data entry or something like that. Or, or why not just make it a perk of ownership? You can just park for free, right? Or something, you know, right. like that's that's maybe a little too radical or whatever. But if, that's if a I, really good idea. If I wanted to earn cryptocurrency when I drive my car, I'd leave my mining rig running when I leave the house. The car is not part of that equation. Yeah, but what if your car had just like what if the your car was most oh, powerful GPU right. ever, and you could just crypto mine the whole time, even when it's you turn it on, boom, you fire up your rig, you're good to go. That's right. And with Starlink, this could be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Way to bring it back around. Uh, what we need at the moment is the Mini or Beetle of elect of electric cars. Um, Don't we? We're close. We're close. The mini um, or Beetle. Obviously, we're not down to the price point yet outside of like the Chevy Spark or the Nissan Leaf. Uh, but there are some inexpensive electrics out there. You can get a Chevy Spark electric for like, what, 25000 a Leaf for thirty. Is the Chevy Volt like pretty affordable? The Chevy Volt is about thirty-five or forty. I want to say. All right. Um, my problem, and I, I've said this before on the <laughs> show, but I, um, I think this comment kind of brings it back up. My problem with the electric cars today, uh, BMW i1 is, is another one. Uh, my my problem with the cars today is they're all based on gas platforms of very very inexpensive cars. Um, so you have the Chevy Spark Electric, which is twenty five thousand dollars. Cool. Yeah. The Chevy Spark is a twelve thousand dollar car. Yeah. Sixteen well equipped. Yeah. You're paying twenty five thousand dollars for a sixteen thousand dollar car. Yeah. Electric or not, I don't care. I'm not getting the features and the build quality and the ride quality of a twenty five thousand dollar car. I'm getting one of a. Fifteen, sixteen thousand dollar car. Uh, the Chevy Leaf is based off the 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 hatchback Versa, uh, and and that's a eleven thousand dollar car versus a thirty thousand dollar car. That those don't match up. No. Uh, same thing with the Volt. The Volt is based off the cruise platform, and so you're you're paying sixty percent or more as a premium to get an electric drivetrain of what really isn't a good car. Then you have Tesla at $35,000 for a Model 3, which is a good car from the ground up. I'm getting an electric car for $35,000. And so I say we're close, but we're not there yet. And it's because no one has built a ground up electric car for the purpose of being an electric car and met an aggressive price point. Right. Yeah. The the Model 3 is as close as we have at $35,000, but that's still a 93 mile range. And that's not... If- Right, and I versus versus, down versus two forty and three twenty or something like that. If you upgrade to the forty and fifty thousand dollars models, right. um, so you know, I wonder if someday, like, what we'll get is when we just have electric cars only, which I guess is a very positive, leafy outlook on life. Mm-hmm. But if we have electric cars only, I wonder if someday we'll see like instead of charging stations, you just get like hot swappable battery stations. Because that's a big drawback to electric cars too. Like remember those, I, I think it was at CES, right? We talked to those guys that had come mm-hmm. down from Oregon. Yeah. Only, and the Tesla. only using Tesla charge stations, yeah. right. And they said it took them forever yeah. 
And it was like, wow, how did you do that? And they're like, oh, we just planned on it, you know, no that, big deal. It's like, kudos to them. Like, that's kind of a cool, like, adventure to take it, upon it, yourself. It, it's a 16-hour drive. It took them three days. Yeah. Uh, to, to make it down. And they said, yeah, we just planned the drive and plan on staying, staying the night places. He goes, the problem is the gas stops it, where you would normally plan. Yeah, you can get a rapid charge in 30 minutes, but that only gets you 70% battery. Right. And so you've, and then you've got to be able to make it to the next charge station. If the next charge station is more than your range allows. Yeah. You're there for two hours because you've got to full, get a full charge on your battery. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's growing it's it's uh yeah, it, it's I mean, coming we're like in the infancy of this technology yes. and while it's come so far <laughs> it's only going to continue to grow it, it's going to take another 10 years plus but, for it to become ubiquitous right and you know that and that's the big sell of obviously gas powered engine cars is that you can pull up to a gas station pump it full of gas and take off you could drive 24 7 if you wanted yep I've done that. I've I've right. done thousand and twelve hundred mile single sitting stints before. Right, exactly. Because because my car can do it. And so I'm wondering if someday like we'll get like obviously you can go home, mm-hmm. plug in to your house, charge your car, and you can just go back and forth between work. But if you gotta drive cross country, maybe right. we get gas stations where you roll up, pop the hood, psh, they pop out the battery, they pop in the new one, they take your old one mm-hmm. so they can charge it up for the next driver or however many. And then you roll on your way with a fully charged battery. Yep. Wouldn't that be something? Or or at at the moment the problem is the the rapid charge stations aren't close enough together. Yeah. And and so if I could if I could make a stop and make it a thirty minute stop, yeah. I'd totally do that every right. three hundred miles. And that's the big and that's a big thing. Like the electric cars are commuter cars at the moment. Mm-hmm. They are go to work, come right. back. They are right. not drive to New York City from Portland. Right. They you not, you can technically do it, but oh, does it take some planning right, right. now? Right. And you know what? Like, it's still leaps and bounds above what the pioneers did for the Oregon Trail, obviously. But, uh, yeah. I, I think it's actually the same route that you take right now. Is it really? Yeah. It's, yeah, why not? That's pretty Not cool. identical, but... It's you don't have to turn your wagon into a raft to make it down the Columbia River Gorge. But. <laughs> do you want to for- fjord your Tesla? <laughs> Dude, if Tus if if, if Tesla Musk, made a boat, yeah, if if, if, if Elon <laughs> Musk put the thought into the into the Tesla that we want, we're gonna be able to get Elon. I would really like a speedboat, right? That'd they be cool. Also turn into a car. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. G- give me an an amphibious car. Yeah. Yep, I know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, one more. Let's. We're skipping this one. Skipping oh, that one. This is my article, son. That's right. Mm. I was going to add this, uh, but you beat me to it. So, yeah. And this actually isn't your article. You posted something from The Verge. Yeah, and I know, and everybody hates The Verge. Yeah, but so shame on you. Like, they are blacklisted oh, on my side. Oh, they just make horrible PC builds. I hate The Verge. No, they're... It's more than... It's more than the content of the video. It's the same content as this article. This article happens to be the same content. It, it's their reaction to the backlash. Look, I'm not saying that The Verge <laughs> is like the second coming of it, Christ. It, it's the abuse of the copyright DMCA system. It's it's the, we didn't do anything wrong. Look, and how dare you suggest otherwise? That That's my problem with The Verge. I'm happy that you don't have... Yeah, I'm happy that it's Ars Technica. Let's do it. Yep. So, Ars Technica <laughs> instead of The Verge. Uh, so, Psionics... The makers of Rocket League today were purchased by Epic Games. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. There is a brewing war that Epic is trying to wage. And not only was Psionic purchased by Epic Games, Epic Games is now pulling Rocket League off of Steam. Permanently. It will never return. Taking one of the most popular MMOs and the MMO, the the online game, it's not an MMO, it's a multiplayer game. Yeah. The multiplayer game that pioneered multi-platform inclusivity, finally getting PlayStation of all people to break down their walls and say, oh yeah, yeah, we'll play with Xbox and PC, not a problem. Literally like sanctioning that off and going, no, 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 we're going to play in our sandbox now again. What the actual crap? Look. I'm all for these companies just wanting to be like, okay, Steam, let us take our slice of the pie. But I feel like the way that Epic has done it is... Ter- is it is so shady off. and underhanded. Because here's the thing. I already got a thousand titles with Steam. Mm-hmm. You're not going to convert me. Right. I'm not going to just buy Rocket League on the other platform again. Right. And Although I did on the Switch. But that's a little bit different. 
I mean, I own it on PlayStation as well. As right, Steam, so right. Like, I bought it twice. He bought it twice. I'm not buying it a third time to play on the same platform. Right, and that's and that. Uh, it just gets me because they've been doing this stuff ever since they le- they launched their store, mm-hmm. and uh, it's hard because I do respect Epic in a way, um, and they've done obviously some great things. Yeah, that Fortnite's a great game, huh? Look, you're, I know you're trying to make a joke. I like Fortnite. It's partially a joke, but but it's also partially not because they have made so much money on that game. I mean, look, let's talk about the golden age of LAN parties. How many of us played Unreal Tournament 2004? Yep. I've got like 1,200 hours in that game. Yep. Just from online multiplayer. Yep. Uh, Quake 3 did the same thing. Uh, Doom, when it was in its infancy for multiplayer over, over dial-up or local area in yeah. LAN or IPX connections yeah. uh, for you uh, older people in the crowd. Uh, yeah, the, that's what I played at, at LAN parties. Later on, Halo was kind right. of the, the thing. Before that, it was GoldenEye on the console. Right, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. <sighs> There's just so much to be said about Epic as a company. They're a great company. And I, they earned a lot of points after uh, Unity's problems that they've kind of drawn up for themselves over mm-hmm. the last like six months or whatever so you got the unity game engine which is free available for public use you can make your game you can sell it uh, royalty free until you make a hundred thousand yep. dollars unreal engine is free so when you're getting into these uh, indie game devs that want to make games they're looking at things like unity they're looking at things like unreal the two titans of the field that are f- both free and for that i respect epic a lot right but but this whole thing with the store has just been unreal to me. I mean, like we've has been news. so anti-consumer in its right, approach. and that's what's gross about it. Yep. You look, you put out a free game like Fortnite, like good for you. That's yep. pro-consumer. A free way. game mode that happened to take off, and you're selling a crap ton of skins for. Remember, Fortnite, the actual game, was not free. Right. Fortnite Battle Royale was the free part. Right. And that just happened to get popular. I know. I remember some people that actually that bought into the early access Fortnite. Right. At thirty bucks. Right. And. To those people, I don't sympathize with you because, like, the game was early access. Sorry. Right. Uh, it's what you get. I bought my fair share of early access. Sometimes it works out. Thank you, Minecraft. Sometimes it doesn't. Other. Uh, Psyonix just tweeted out they will continue to support Steam users for whatever it's worth, which means they'll continue to sell yeah. you a DLC, but they're not going to sell the game on Steam anymore. And Well, and I'll, yeah, yeah, and that's... So... Yeah, there's a lot to be said here. Yeah. Other, and... and Epic, everything that they're doing with their own store is just gross. And and again, I'm all for a company getting theirs. I'm all for a company taking advantage of a marketplace and, and whatnot. And if the marketplace is leaning towards exclusivity right now and Epic is the one paying out the money, I, I it's really hard for me to fault them as a company trying to make money. But at the same time, it is so anti-consumer in, in its approach. And, and it's it, literally a giant middle finger to the community. And it sucks to go after Rocket League, which is... A hugely successful multiplayer game, multi-platform that a was multi-platform a multi-platform is revolutionary. Right. We've talked about that on Talking Heads before. Right. Like I said, it, it got PlayStation to, to take the handcuffs off. That that was big news. That was really big news <coughs> when when it got it to do that. And now all of a sudden they're trying to like cordon off that sandbox again. Yeah. It's just sucks. Anyway, there's only so much we can continue to say the same thing about it. I mean, it sucks. Epic. Yep. Kind of disappointing. Yep. Yeah, for as much good as Epic has done in the community, you're doing a lot of bad right now. Yeah. And and only time will tell, but competition is good, but exclusivity is not. Competition means I can buy whatever I want, wherever I want. Not there's multiple storefronts with multiple exclusive products. That's not competition. Yeah. As, as a lot of the... Uh, show streaming sites are probably going to learn here in the next couple years. Do you know why Netflix was so successful against piracy? Was it because it offered $7 streaming for every movie ever made? And all of a sudden, Disney and Warner and CBS and ABC and NBC and da-da-da-da-da said, oh, we want our piece of the pie. We're going to make our own streaming service for $10 and we're only going to show our shows because our shows are the best thing that's ever made. And all of a sudden, my streaming bill went from $10 a month to $70 a month. It's not about not being available for sale. It's about where are my choices at and can I make the choices that I want on the platform that I want? Uh, Piracy is an availability issue. It's not a competition issue. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a, 
And that's something I wish that they would learn. That that's that's why Steam was successful. Is it literally demolished piracy on PC? Look, now I'm not saying I ever pirated games. I I will. I pirated games. I will fully admit I pirated games in the past. <laughs> I'll admit right here and now I pirated games in the past. I'm not willing to admit that. I won't do it anymore because I make enough money I can afford the games. And they're but, easily available. You can press a button and right. you can download the damn thing to your computer right. in less than an hour usually. Right. Uh, my wife is a massive Sims fan. Um, we have bought... Every single copy of Sims 2, all of the, the add-on packs and whatnot, we're probably into Sims 2 for like $400. We're probably into Sims 3 for like $600 or $700. I'm not even joking. The problem is when I have to have the original disc or an origin account or an account that backfires or suddenly my access key is not active and da-da-da-da-da, I'll fully admit I own most of the Sims 3 on, on origin uh, through my wife's account. We just downloaded a repack of that via torrent and installed that. I still own a legal copy and a license, but you know what? I don't have to deal with the BS that comes with Origin and everything else just to play the goddamn game. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so then it becomes an availability and an access issue. If, if Origin's offline and I can't log in to play Steam or to, to play The Sims, she's still gonna wanna play The Sims and I don't wanna deal with, the, with all the BS that comes with all the DRM crap. So yeah, I... We own all of The Sims 3. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean we use those installs. Plus, I had a bunch of issues with a bunch of early EA titles that are on Origin. Mm -hmm. that, like, they were like, look, just send us a copy, like a picture of your discs and your CD key, and like, we'll uh, get you. A need for Speed Shift. I still have yet to be able to play that game online. Yeah. I had a bunch, and they were like, never mind, this won't work. So I ended up having to rebuy some of them on origin luckily like i managed to get some of them for like really good deals like one of the ones that really bugged me was battlefield 2142 yep and uh you know like i remember like okay they still want 20 dollars for this game like what the hell and then it went on sale for 99 cents right so uh Amazon, no the, the the problem i had with with origin was uh, I've, I've got a couple of dozen games on Origin. I've got Titanfall, Titanfall 2. I've got Battlefield 4. I've got 2142. I've got... Uh, and then I've got some of the Need for Speed Shift games. Sure. Uh, so I've got Need for Speed Shift 1 and, sh and Shift 2. Um, with Shift 1, I got the game in a physical copy. Uh, and this was like 2010. Bought the game as a physical copy. Registered on online. And the day I registered it, it said, Your CD key is not valid. No, it... What? Did I type it in wrong? Typed it in again? No, your CD key has already been activated. So I called Origin, had to go through all the hoops of, oh, yeah, your CD key's not valid. Well, I have the disk and I have the... Okay, photocopy those and send them to us and yep. we'll get you a new key. <laughs> so I photocopied those, sent them to that, got a new key, played that, played it for literally 24 hours online. The next day I logged in and I said, sorry, you can't log in online. Your CD key, CD key is not valid. So I emailed them again and said, hey, this is a continuation of the last ticket. Still having problems. The CD key you gave me yesterday isn't working. They said, oh, sorry, the CD key that you just sent us a photocopy of, we already have that on record as correcting. We can't help you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, EA. So You're killing gaming. Right. I hate you, EA. You ruined Star Wars. DRM becomes an availability issue. Whether I can buy it on your store site or not, whether I can buy it in-store or not, DRM is an availability issue. And if I bought the game and I can play it, I'm just going to go download it yeah. because it's available. Why do you think good old games is so popular? Right. There, there are so many titles I bought on both Steam and good old games that I own the disc for mm -hmm. that either wouldn't install or it's like, I don't, I don't have a disc drive in my PC anymore. I, I rebought 13 not long ago yeah. and, and played through that again because it's I mean, available on good old games. Yeah. What the hell am I supposed to do with seven Morrowind CDs? You know? <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I remember Night, I Knights, bought, of, Knights of the Nine, Isles of the... <laughs> yeah. I also, it's like I bought Company of Heroes when it mm -hmm. first came out. And they didn't have any DVD copies at the store, so I bought CDs. It was like nine or ten CDs to install that game. You think I'm going to want to keep doing that for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. No, bought it on Steam. Uh... Uh, my wife had it out with EA over The Sims because she wanted to play it while she was deployed and they just couldn't understand why someone would want to play the game without an active internet connection. It's and that's that they, my problem. It's not that they couldn't understand. It's that they're paid to not care. Right. Like, yeah. this is EA's destroying gaming. 
NFS shift was broken. Uh, actually, it was probably one of the best and best looking racing sim games. Uh, people gave it crap for the physics. I, I wholeheartedly disagree. The, the racing physics on that game were amazingly well done. Um, <laughs> and it was one of the best VR titles and, and sim rig titles out there for quite a while. Now, I know people always go, live for speed, or or what's the other one? iRacing. Uh, I'm not playing my my $2,000 racing sim inside of a game that was built in 2005. Sorry, I expect a little bit better. Honestly, the only Need for Speed I ever enjoyed was Underground, and it was for, like, the pseudo-RPG elements yep. to the game, where you could, like, soup up your cars and, like, do the storyline. Oh, and yeah, uh, by the way, 13 is being remastered. Oh, nice. <laughs> Could not be more happy about that. Uh, literally the week it was announced, I, I played through 13 like two weeks ago. Like I, I, I just like re-downloaded it on Google Games and, and played back through it. Yeah. Like this is such a good game. The cell shading was amazing. It the was. voice acting was was top notch. Yeah, don't you got uh, uh, what's his name in da- that? David Duchovny and uh, uh, Batman. Family Guy, yeah. Um, uh, oh my God. Adam West. Adam West, Adam West. thank you. God. Yeah. Yeah, David Duchovny, Adam West, quite a few other well-known voice actors in there as well. Yep. But uh, the game is just so good, and it holds up well. I rented that game from Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> I owned it on GameCube. I bought it again yeah. on PC. Uh, I found it on like clearance at Target like that on the disc. It was four discs. Yeah. It, it wasn't no joke. Um, GameCube is where I played it. Yep, yeah, played it on GameCube, and then the, literally like a year and a half or two years ago, bought it on, on good old games, because like... Six bucks? Heck yeah. yeah. It's a great game. Thanks, CD Projekt Red. Yep. Anyway. anyway uh, I am turning off chat for the moment. Uh, Avengers Endgame sets weekend uh, opening record. Dude. They destroyed. You didn't just set it. <laughs> they destroyed. Set the mark for like the next two decades. They destroyed. Yeah. There's the thing. You don't get to have a movie like Infinity War. It, it's kind of like Star Wars when it was eclipsed by Titanic. Think of the, the time gap that happened between those. Because yeah. Star Wars 1977 was the biggest opening weekend of all time. And it wasn't beaten until 97 when Titanic was released. Yeah. So there was a 20-year run Again. on that. Another 20-year run on that. We may see a 20-year run on this record because it is so astronomically large. Uh, Avengers pulled in $1 billion overseas on the way to a $2 billion global opening this weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, $2 billion. Yeah. Uh, oh, and by the way, it took the franchise over $3 billion worldwide. I'm not even mad. They earned my ticket price, I'll right. tell you that much, and they're going to earn it again. I'm going to go see the movie again. Yeah. Oh, no, it was over $20 billion, uh, for the franchise. So for all 22 Marvel movies, it's over $20 billion now. So on the same day that this eclipsed $2 billion globally for the opening of Avengers uh, Endgame, it also crossed $20 billion for the entire franchise. So That's ridiculous. It's a good set of movies, not going to lie. <laughs> I'm happy with it. And I've seen most of them. Yeah, I haven't seen all of them. Yeah, um, I haven't seen Civil War. That's that's the one I'm missing. Although you told me before that you had seen Civil War. No, I had not seen Civil War. Gotcha. I have seen Infinity War. Um, with no headphones. With no headphones. I don't. Um, I I, I, I later I later saw about half of it or so with audio, kind of like so it was like, on. I mean, a it's on event. Netflix. I know. I'm just, like I'm just wondering what I have to do as like a friend to make <laughs> this happen because, you know, the thing is is like. You know, I to me, I really appreciated the kickoff with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as they call it, with mm-hmm. Iron Man. Like, that movie just knocked my socks Iron off. Man was amazing. Thor was amazing. Captain America was amazing. Captain America was really good. Yeah. Thor was, like, fine. I watched it on DVD. I rented it. And I was like, wow, this is actually surprisingly good. Yep. I didn't I don't know why I didn't see this in theaters. Yep. And then, like, there was a couple other hit and miss ones, blah, 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 blah. Avengers came out, which just, like, knocked my socks off. Yep. I thought, like... Obviously, Joss Whedon writing it and yep. just, like, the scope of the movie and how many stars you had on screen at one point. I was like, this is a fantastic movie. Yeah. And then, like, the whole Phase 2 thing was, like, kind of weak. It, uh, like, Avengers Ultron, nobody looked m- more forward to uh, Age of Ultron uh, than I did. Mm-hmm. Like, I was so stoked from the trailers and, like, James Spader was, like, one of my favorite actors. 
And, like, the movie hit the mark in some ways, and I really enjoyed it, but, like, it had some production problems. Like, they had to, like... I think they had to, like, move Joss Whedon off, like, the writing and directing thing, like, halfway through the movie and get somebody else in. And I don't know. I had some problems, but it was pretty good. And then all the movies were kind of bad up until, in my opinion, Civil War, the third Captain America series. Although, apparent, like... Winter Soldier, Captain America 2, was also very good. Winter Soldier was great. I did see that yeah. one. Uh, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, I thought, right. was Right, and that great. all gets into the Phase 3, which is after yeah. Civil War. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy was kick-ass. Yeah. Civil War was kick-ass. Then you get, like, Doctor Strange, Black Panther, mm-hmm. Ragnarok. All yep. of these movies are just kick-ass from start to finish. And yep. if you disagree with me, I don't care. <laughs> You're wrong. Like, no, it's not about that. It's just like, I think that the people that are so against these movies are just gatekeeping at a certain point. Right. They're just like, well, I read the comics and I do this, or blah, 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 or it's a boring movie, or it didn't actually have good writing, or the characters are flat, or blah. And that's fine. You're welcome to think that. I, I, However, I, I, the moment you take to your blog is the moment you lose me. Right. I, I read a lot of comics when I was between the ages of 8 and 16. I read a lot of comics. Right. Comics you've probably never heard of, as well as the all the X Men comics and different storylines that went on there, and Spider Man and Captain America, and right. Thor and the Hulk and and whatnot. Um, read a lot of comics. Doesn't mean I don't enjoy the movies. Doesn't mean I don't enjoy them for what they are and what storylines they portray. Right. Um, and uh, and and the different takes that they can do on them right. because I consider them different mediums. I consider the Harry Potter books different from the Harry Potter movies. Yeah, exactly. They're two different takes on the exactly. same universe, and they're both great in their and own it's respect. It's fun to be able to watch it on the screen. What's your problem? Right. Like, just because you read the books and you're some elitist guy who loves these Harry Potter books doesn't mean that the movies aren't any less enjoyable. Right. Just watch them and enjoy them. There are some adaptations that are dog crap. Mm-hmm. We all know that. That's fine. Yep. But the Harry Potter adaptations are good. Um, I I read a lot of the uh, the uh, Star Wars extended universe. It yeah, doesn't mean that I uh, am, you know, going. Oh, they didn't follow this storyline, so no. they're complete crap. And here's the thing: look, you not find a bigger Star Wars fan than me. So sorry. I read every, not every single. I read almost every single extended universe book that I could get my hands on. I was obsessed, even the garbage extended universe books. <laughs> And when Disney bought Star Wars, I was like, okay, this could be a good thing, bad thing. And then they announced that like none of the EU was going to be canon from here on out. Yep. I was devastated. Yep. I was so heartbroken and pissed. But you know what they've done? They've made something fresh. Why would I go and see the movies of these books that I've read over and over for the last 20 years? Like, they've made something fresh mm-hmm. while taking the best parts of the EU and recycling them. Yep. They've just taken all of my favorite parts and left out the garbage. Yep. And that's what they're going to continue to do. You know, and so many people are like, look at Ray, she looks like Bastila from KOTOR. I'm like, good. Good. Bastila was an amazing character. Right. They're like, <laughs> look at Kylo Ren's mask. It looks like Revan's mask. I'm like, good. Revan was a great character. Yeah. And they, they're going to keep saying it. Yep. And everybody that you talk to hates R- Star R- Wars. Ray and Kylo Ren should have been should have been the twins that, that Han and Leia separated at, at birth. Well, like, who knows? There's one more movie. One more movie still. Oh, my God. And J.J. Abrams came out and, like, the freaking outcry after Last Jedi. They're like, okay, well, you losers, look at this. See, I told you. Ray I love your douchebag accent, by the way. Oh, God. I know. You got Ray doesn't one. mean anything because Ray doesn't have parents. See, I told you. Star Wars sucks. Disney sucks. You ruined my childhood. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Like, the only person that said her parents are nobody is Kylo Ren, who you watched lie for two movies. Right. And all of a sudden now you're just like, I'm going to listen to what he says? No. I hate Uh, you if you're that person. I hate you. You know who the Emperor actually is? It's that that eight-year-old kid who picked up the broom with the force at the end of, uh, of Seven. Could you imagine how many people would be upset? <laughs> the emperor lives and he's inside the body of an eight-year-old boy. I just don't un- I don't understand the amount of people that have just forgotten how to enjoy movies. Yeah. You, like, like seriously, just enjoy the ride. If it's a bad movie, it's a bad movie. And that's But fine. stop poking holes in it purposely. But you know what movie I didn't watch in theaters that I wish I would have just based on fan reaction was like the new Ninja Turtles movies? I didn't watch them in theaters because everybody ragged on them. And so I saw it on Netflix. I was like... All I could think the whole time is how 10-year-old Rhett would have freaking loved that movie. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm not special, and I could detach myself from being an adult to enjoy a movie. Speaking of your 10-year-old coming back to haunt you. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. 
So, uh, there's a new Sonic the Hedgehog trailer out. Have you watched this? Yes. I haven't. And I think it's worse than we feared. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh man, it's bad. I just wonder, though, It's but it's bad. It's like Alvin and the Chipmunks CGI <laughs> and Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, it's not even getting into the design of Sonic. We're just getting into Jim Carrey playing Dr. Robotnik. A lot of people are going, oh, that's going to be the saving grace. No, no, no. Jim Carrey signed on for some real crap movies in the past. Don't don't think he's going to come in and save Name your franchise. One. Ooh. Uh... Oh, you're having a hard time. You're struggling. You can't name one bad movie, Jim Carrey. I didn't like up. Eternal Eternal Sunshine. I didn't like that. 23. Okay, 23 is the one I'll give you, but also you watched it. I did. Because you're like, whoa, this looks good. I, I, I did. Not hey, only Jim did Carrey's you watch in it. it. Not only did you watch it, you probably watched it twice. No, I watched it once. Okay, I watched it twice because right. I was like, was this movie as good as I thought it was? <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course you did. Um, but... Honestly, his early career up to like Mask and Bruce Almighty and, and whatnot, phenomenal career. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, Jim Carrey's in this one. Eh, that one wasn't very good. Oh, Jim Carrey's in... Eh, that one wasn't very good I really like Eternal Jim Sunshine Ke personally, but... I, I wasn't high on Eternal Sunshine. What's the other one with Ewan McGregor that he did? He did a movie with Ewan McGregor. And it was bad? Obi-Wan was bad? Uh, I guess just following Star Wars memes on Reddit has jaded me towards thinking... I love you, Philip Morris. I never saw it's that. The, the two prison, prisoners who... Uh, yeah. No idea. It wasn't a good movie. wasn't okay. a good movie. I'll give that to you. Anyway. Um, uh, anyway, so this looks horrible, I guess. Yeah. And I've seen the pictures, and I'm just like, first of all, this doesn't look like a movie I'd see, so why would I care? Right. Um, I have a hard time because, like, was anybody particularly close with the Sonic character until now? What's really funny is, well, nostalgia's a hell of a drug. Is it? Okay. okay. Nostalgia, so in sorry. general, is a hell I of agree. a drug. I've been accused of having the worst nostalgia of all time. So right. I'm not trying to bash on fellow nostalgics here. But were any of us particularly close with Sonic? Like, I played the hell out of Sonic 1, and Sonic 2, I still think, is, like, one of the greatest platformer games right. ever. There, there was a time in which there was not a Super Nintendo in my house. We had uh, sold that off, and, uh, and, and what I had available was a Sega Genesis. And, and I had Sonic 1, 2, and 3. I had Knuckles. I had Sonic Spinball. I had a Game Gear. I, I love Spinball. I, I, I was fully involved with the, with the Sega Knuckles, ecosystem. You know one of the best parts about Sonic and Knuckles? You could open it up, and you could put the other cartridges. That's in. right. And Put a game genie on top of that. Start stacking shit. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Uh... But again, I, I get that you played a so, lot of Sonic. So games, I played a lot of Sonic, but I was is never as ingrained in the culture. Is not even close. Okay. Don't even care what you were gonna say. Probably Mario, but not even. Yeah, close. I was gonna say Mario. Yeah, probably which not even. We close. all saw what's his name. Um... Dan. Uh... Dan? Hawk? No, House Harris Holt. Bill? Bill. Uh, Mario movie. Uh, Super Mario Brothers. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh my god, it's not on there. That's heartbreaking. IMDb. IMDb. Second one. What's his name? Two Brooklyn He's Plumbers. He's a wrestler. He's Mario Mar movies that are good. I can uh, see Bob his... Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. Hoskins. He was a pro wrestler. And he's in other movies that are good. Yeah. But anyway, was Mario that? Mario and Luigi Mario. Yeah, which was a funny joke. It was a funny joke. I liked that movie. Yeah. Also, what was his name was in it? I liked that movie, but man, I... Oof. What was King Koopa's name? Daniel... Wait, Daniel? Why do I keep... <laughs> Dan? Doing this? What was his name? But he's like a big actor. He was in Speed. The main bad guy in Speed. Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper, thank you. I think that was John Leguizamo. Yeah, John... So, I mean, the they, they had big names in the movie. In the movie, it's good. Yeah. But anyway, not important. What I'm asking, though, you're right. Sonic isn't ingrained in the public culture. So why, 30 years after Sonic's heyday, do we actually care that there's a movie coming out? Sonic hasn't bad? had a good game in over 20 years. Yeah. Come fight me. <laughs> Dude, has there? Although Sonic Adventure 2, or Battle, yeah, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle was really good. Yeah. Because it had other aspects. It's had moments. It. it hasn't had a good game. Yeah. Beginning to end, fully playable, well, platformer. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. <laughs> I'll fight you. <laughs> this is the game I probably spent a thousand hours on on the GameCube because it had more than just the game. It had 
the little animals that you could raise. I wish you could remember their names. Sonic hasn't had a good game since Super Mario Olympics. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> but, just like any good Japanese game, what made Sonic Adventure 2 Battle was the side games. Yeah. The mini games. Yeah. You raise animals, and you had two games that you could play with the animals that you raised. Fighting, and you could fight them against each other. Mm -hmm. Or racing, and you could race them against each other. You know what other game did that? Final Fantasy VII with Chocobos. Except you couldn't fight them. You could just race them. Yeah. But however, how many of us spent way too many hours just Chocobo racing or playing Blitzball in Final Fantasy X? Right? right? Okay. We're all right, right there. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. You spent... Was it, was it eight or nine in the casino? I think it was eight in the casino. Oh, Which yeah. one had the casino? Well, I mean... The cas there, there's a lot of casino mini games. I yeah, think like six Final had a casino mini game. Like seven had the casino seven had a mini casino. game where you could go and play all the other mini games. Come yeah. On. Like you could go do the snowboarding one. You could do the submarine yeah. one. Yeah. You do all that. Eight had the card game, like the best card game. Right. Which was... Uh, that. That's that's the one I was saying. Yeah, yeah, I can't even remember what the name of the card game is. But yeah. you just spend all your time playing the card game and collecting cards. Anyway... But do they have a movie? Yes, they did. Mystic Quest was a better game. Ooh. Ooh. I, far be it from me to, to question Jeremy. your personal taste. Final Fantasy VII was the worst in the series. No, it wasn't. Ooh, yeah. There's a lot of dog shit titles in that series, and Seven is not. Seven is not even close. I will say I stand that Six is probably the best Final Fantasy, which is three, three in the U.S. Yeah. Um, six. Is, wait, you're saying that's the best? Best. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. That was the best. I think followed by seven. Probably followed by. Really. I'd go. I'd go two slash four. All right, you're going old school, and I can appreciate that. I I, I, I would lean back more than I would lean lean forward. I was gonna say ten. Ten was good. Ten of, was good. A lot of people like eight, but I never quite connected with it all that well, so I'm a little I, I, biased. I, I played uh, seven through ten, not a problem. Um, really enjoyed seven, really enjoyed eight. Um, I, I would take six or US three on the SNES. Yeah, um, those were, that uh, was the best. That was the best as far as storytelling and gameplay and, and the dynamics within the story. And you could play the same game ten times and never end up with the same story. Right. And that was incredibly revolutionary for the time. Right. Um, and they were all good stories. It wasn't like you end up at the same place, you just got there a different way. No, they were t completely different endings. Right. And not only that, but it's like also the character mechanics were different. It actually benefited you to spend time with different characters right. because their abilities were different. Right. Whereas in 7, I loved 7. However, you could just make the character be whatever you wanted to be. The only difference in them was... The only difference in them was their limit abilities. Story-wise, I think Tactics was the best. Seven was when they started to focus on graphics more than story. No, what? no, they had 3D. That doesn't mean they focused more on it. Seven was still a great game. Seven, okay, the 3D, they focused on graphics. All of the backgrounds are 2D. Are 2D. Yeah, the, it, it's, it's, it's three, hand drawn it, 2D. It's, three, with, it's 3D sprites on top of a, a 2D background. And I think that was the best decision they made. Eight, they tried to go all... All 3D, and, all they, 3D and, and, and the gameplay suffered. And it, but not only that, it looked bad. Would you like another beer, or are you good? I'm good. Okay. Uh, not only that, it looked bad, in my opinion. Play right. 7 versus 8, yeah. and it's like, okay, the graphics upgrade, blah, blah, blah. That's what people told you. Right. But in hindsight, the like low-poly character models in 7 looked amazing compared to 8. And the two-dimensional, hand-drawn backgrounds were amazing. They were good. Start the game, walk through the Mako reactors... And tell me that that doesn't look great. And, like, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes it's a little hard to, like, navigate with your 3D sprite on the 2D thing. But that's because they were going to make the game for a Nintendo console before they, like, jump ship to, to Sony. Right. Like, I don't know, man. I think 7, story-wise, was pretty gripping. Gameplay-wise, pretty gripping. Because it had a lot of... It had a lot of places you could stop playing the game and, like, do other stuff. Like, it had a lot of places you could stop and you could do Chocobo Racing or you could play the mini games, you know? And then, not only that, but it's like you need, in my opinion, it's like you need to do Chocobo Racing to, like, mm -hmm. get the best spell and, like, 100% the game. You want to talk about this, like, idea that started, like, this whole thing of 100% in games, like we have now on with trophies and things like that? I think it all kind of started with 7 in a way. It started around that era. 
I mean, totally. yeah. And I, I don't think that seven was the first, but I think that like that kind of really pushed it. As far as percent of completion and, and making it a metric, um, I would say it did focus back on a, a generation before, maybe like Donkey Kong Country for SNES, because there was the, <laughs> the collecting all four letters during, during okay, the game. Fair. There yeah. was uh, Super Mario getting all 120 stars. And, and so the, there were games that predated 7's right. completion percentage. But there was way... Yeah, okay, so that's a good example. Those, those are actually two really sharp examples. Um, <laughs> I know my gaming history. <laughs> what can I say? You know, but I have no defense against that. Anyway, Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't watched the trailer. And I got to say, am I sacrilegious if I say I don't care and I'm not going to watch the trailer? Nope. Nope. Because I just saw how much, like traction this got on reddit and it's just like why are people so passionate? why do suddenly why do people suddenly care about sonic the hedgehog yeah, one way or the other yeah like who cares yeah uh i will say nostalgia is a hell of a drug and you can go you can show something to people and they go oh i remember that that was really cool and what they're trying to do is they're trying to reinvent sonic but they've been trying to reinvent sonic since 1998 um, because Sonic kind of failed on the Dreamcast, then he failed on moving the jump to, to GameCube, and, and he's never Sonic had a... Sonic Adventure 2 Battle is a great game. <sighs> I hate you if you disagree. But was it Sonic? Yeah. Was it a platformer, side-scrolling? No. All, all of that we no. know Sonic It wasn't Sonic those things. Do. However, when you played the Sonic levels, it felt like a modern Sonic game. Right. But they had the different characters that had their different levels. Mm -hmm. So, like, the Tails levels were more, like, three-dimensional, like, kind of explore exploration levels. Uh -huh. And then, I can't remember any of the other characters to save my life. But Excuse they, me. Sorry. But they basically were different game modes mm -hmm. that accompanied each character mm -hmm. right and sonic was the races my tails was the expiration my my biggest problem with sonic as a whole is sega never really knew what to do with him and 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 hear me out when i say that okay because you had sonic one two and three and then you had knuckles coming in uh which you could add your sonic one two three cartridges into knuckles and you could play with that or you could actually add a couple other games into the knuckles cartridges and use knuckles in those games there oh, were really? other games that you could do that with i had no idea um but even inside of that one through three heyday of Sonic, they were placing Sonic into other games and changing up his game mode entirely. For the Game Gear, there was things like Sonic Labyrinth, where yeah, uh, I like Spinball. Spinball, was when you brought and, up, but I liked Spinball. In a way. Spinball was a decent game. It was a decent mechanic, but should it have been Sonic? I don't think it should have been. Yeah, uh, it it would have it would have it, it it made more sense in like uh, what is that uh, bubble. Oh, Bubble Blast! Bubble whatever. Blast! Yeah, yeah. It, that it made more sense in that universe than it did in Sonic's universe, yeah. and and they're and they've always always been searching for like the next game mode. Dude, you guys had a formula with one through three plus Knuckles that worked. Yeah. Why are you trying to like push this character into other game modes that it doesn't fit? Yeah. And why are you changing up Sonic to be this weird human hybrid hedgehog thing? Yeah. With human eyes and, for God's sakes, human teeth. Yeah, the teeth are what's weird. Human hands and I know human feet is canon. That's a weird thing, but human feet is technically canon with the shoes. Um, but that's not Sonic. That looks more like the monkey from uh, uh, Jumanji. Yeah, I saw them post that. Yeah. I, I kind of agreed. I totally did. Yeah. It's just weird because Sonic, I don't feel like, ever fit into a specific niche. Like, he never had, like, the mythos and the grandeur that, like, Mario built mm -hmm. for himself. And, Hell, uh, even Earthworm Jim is more defined. Right, yeah. Um, so it's hard to say. I kind of enjoyed some of those, like, off-the-wall titles like Spinball. Mm -hmm. I really tried to enjoy Sonic 3D Blast, but I just couldn't do that. Um, but but here's the thing from a adventure to battle i'm gonna stand by it for uh, I'll, I'll let you stand by it i'll i'll, I'll, I'll give mean, it to granted, you i beat the game and i was a kid and here's a here's why it. mario has more staying power Mario's a person and and the things that they had mario do in the world as mythical as it was with castles and pipes um they were also able to make the transition into the real world and that really happened around mario 64 where all of a sudden i'm walking around an environment that kind of lives and breathes that and it's it's a 3d place and they evolved stylistically with it but they never lost sight of i'm a platformer game with yeah. this and that 
But I mean, then yeah, Mario's but, also a person, and hey, let's throw him into a tennis game, or let's throw him into this game, and let's throw dude, him into that. Some of the Mario sports titles are amazing. They are, and like, they're great. I always loved uh, but, Slugger. But Sonic has always been a super fast 2D platformer, uh, and that's, that's what he was developed as. And when you put Sonic into an Olympics game where he's running the same speed as Mario, you lose the fact of why Sonic is in there. Yeah. And, and so, while Mario was able to make the transition into other titles pretty seamlessly, Sonic doesn't exist in that world. And, and trying to place him there just feels awkward. And I feel this movie is awkward. See, it's tough because, like, again, like, I think the first two, three titles were super solid platformers. I think set apart a lot by the music, which was, like, really powerful in those games. It's early on, right? Like, why do we know Mario? Partially because his musical theme sticks right. in your head. And I don't necessarily think that, like, Sonic has his own theme, but, like, we all know, like, the Green Zone theme. I always Hill Zone like, theme. Excuse me, the Hill Zone theme. Uh, I always really liked the underwater theme that he got. Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of, like, great Sonic pieces. Um, Casino Zone was great, too. Casino Zone was really good, but that was number two, Three. wasn't it? Three, Three was Casino, I, I thought. Two. Just kidding. I don't really remember. But I just remember Sonic 2 is my favorite of the games because you could get Super Sonic. Yep. Uh, yeah, Tails in there. The Tails was in there, yeah. There was lots of fun stuff. Anyway. What was really fun is on Sonic 3, if you plugged in Controller 2, Player 2 could control Tails. Yeah, I remember that. And and so you could actually like Do have that. Tails fly and then have him pick up Sonic and fly you to other areas. Yeah. That was great. Was I remember cool playing stuff. with two controllers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's some cool stuff. Honestly... I wish the movie luck. Um, it's not going to do well. Oh. It's not going to do well. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Who knows? Maybe the trailer just sucks. Uh, we had one more story. I'm going to say screw it. Uh, Earthworm Jim's getting a new game for a new Intellivision, or it's, sorry, a new Amico. Uh, right. I feel in, like Intellivision they're... Amico. I feel like the real story is inside the story. Okay, do tell, because you have me curious. The Amico console. Right. I mean, have you guys talked about that? On we there? have not. Okay, so, right. That's my takeaway on this. Yeah. When I read the article, I was like, well, hello, new console. And then, of right. course, I looked at the new the new console here. Um, and I was like, wait a minute. All I cared about to... was Earthworm Jim. Right. And that's the thing. is like I don't think any of the titles that they have lined up have the name recommend, uh, recognition as Earthworm Jim. Right. Um, which was a great, great title. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I can't blame you for that i i even run an ad blocker what the hell is with that mass sex game that looks like a kinky mass effect blows up on kickstarter seriously like because that's not an ad this is a title on it's just uh, a clickbait on polygon aggreg aggregate site from polygon yeah um but still I think where does game of thrones go from here i don't know they probably finished the last eight episodes dude how many people are... Have you, do you watch Game of Thrones? Uh, I do, but here's the deal. It's not a show I can watch with my kids around. And I'm only home at times when they're awake, and other times I'm working. And so the only shows I've watched in the last six years have been shows that I can watch with them around. It took me an extra, like, three years to finish Breaking Bad because I could only watch that at, like, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Um, and so I watched, like, one episode every, like, four weeks. Yeah, okay. So uh, we, we'll I, I'm pass. way behind in Game of Thrones. I'm on like but, season three of Game of Thrones. But you know how fandoms get. They're yeah. really upset about last week's episode. Yeah. Why? And so I've heard. I, because it didn't go the way that they thought it should go. Yeah. Who cares? Right. You writing for Game of Thrones all right. of a sudden? Again, sit you back. The one in the sit back and enjoy the ride. You don't know how episode four is going to go. So quit your bitch and quit your complaining because you saying. may end up in a better place than you thought you would. And then not only that, like who knows, like if you're super pissed and you're a super fan, like who knows how the books are going to go. Right. Yeah, because we're ahead of the books at this point. Look, I've got a so lot So you of, don't know. I've got a lot of problems with the show. Yeah. But it's still a good show. Right. That's what I'll say. And people are like, Wee. anyway. Um, yeah, this new console. I always thought, I kind of thought it was like, oh, are they going for next gen here? And I'm like looking at the concept art. No, they're not going for next gen. They're going for the nostalgia, nostalgia. factor. Right. They're going to hit on the nostalgia titles. Right. They're looking at making their games between two ninety nine and seven ninety nine. Yep. That's like the cost of a good mobile game. Right. Um, Less than the cost of Final Fantasy on mobile. 
There you go. Perfect. That's sixteen ninety nine for Final Final Fantasy IV, which I've bought on four other platforms, but I refuse to buy on Android. Yeah, why would Screw you, buy you it on Android? Square Enix? Yeah, you're yeah. as bad as Epic. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so this is kind of cool. Obviously, Earthworm Jim um, was a great Genesis game, and launching October tenth, twenty twenty. So we're still over a year away from launch. Yeah, but. We'll see how it goes for yep. uh, in television. And I think that's pretty much going to do it. Unless someone has a real quick question they can throw out, I might answer one or two. Uh, but other than that, I think we're going to call this a show. Steve says it was filmed bad. He says, yeah, uh, I, last episode of Game of Thrones was great, but it was filmed poorly. I'm not going to challenge you on this because a lot of people have the same complaints, Steve. Uh, to me, I was literally watching it. I just go, huh, did I lower the darkness settings on my TV? And I brightened it, and I had zero issues. And then everybody complained about it, and I was like, oh, I guess I must not have. But yeah. also, I still had zero problems just raising the brightness on my right. TV. I, I get crapped on a lot, and uh, unjustly, because I think John Wick 1 is way better than John Wick 2. Sure. Uh, the reason I feel that way is John Wick 1 cinematography wise was literally the quintessential what you should be in an action movie right there was not a single point where i was nauseous dizzy confused or lost in all of the action shots i knew exactly where i was as an observer in the scene right there was never a confusing moment i knew exactly what the actors were doing i could see every hand move i could see every punch every bullet fired yeah cinematography was perfect in john wick 2 the story developed the universe developed there's a couple of things in story wise that kind of got lost that's kind of up to interpretation but that's kind of the universe itself it works in mystery i wasn't disappointed no where i was disappointed with john wick 2 was there were a number of points cinematography wise where they would change a camera angle and all of a sudden i'm like how did we get to this room? Oh, it's the same room. It's just from like a completely different angle. Diff different angle. I'm completely lost in the scene now. Or there were so many scenes shot in literally like pitch black with a single spotlight where you lose so much of the action that's happening. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, I apologize, but uh, uh, John Wick is entering this mansion and he's like placing a lot of weapons outside yeah. the place while he's walking in, kind of like preparing his escape. And in his escape, he's walking, but you see him place every weapon. They set up every single scene that he's going yeah. to be in. And on his way out of the mansion, he's supposed to be like grabbing those weapons and using them strategically. The problem is it's like, okay, oh, he sewed the shotgun here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see that later on. All of a sudden, 20 minutes later, he's got a shotgun in his hand and I'm like, Oh, we're back in that in that place. I never saw him grab that because it filmed it from a completely different angle than than I saw coming in. That's interesting because I can envision the scene you're talking uh -huh. about because uh, that's the only one I've seen. Right. And I've seen John Wick two, and I'm like, holy crap! I want to see John Wick one. John Wick one is a it's perfect. I, I it's the perfect. only reason I haven't seen it is because there's not a place where I can watch it for free. Right. You know, like I saw John Wick 2 for the first time on a plane. I'll, I'll, I'll get you access to my Plex server. Oh, heck yeah. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> but that's the thing, that scene, I remember being like, oh, the shotgun. What a payoff. Right. Right, exactly. But but he places it, but again, as as an observer who was like waiting for the shotgun, yeah. it's like, he has a shotgun all of a sudden. We're, oh, we're back in that room. Yeah. But I didn't see us enter that room. I didn't see him grab it. It was all too dark and too... See, it was too stylistic, and there were also many kill moves and many punches and whatnot that I just flat out missed yeah. because they weren't filmed properly yeah. compared to the first one. They're both great films, but they weren't just... That second one just didn't have that extra level of polish that the first one did. Yeah. Anyway. Agree, um, John Wick 1 was way better. Um, I think it was not filmed with an audience in mind. That's the Game of Thrones Game episode. of Thrones, yeah. Yeah, and it could be, in the, in the and one of the showrunners came out and was like, yeah, well, don't watch it on your iPad or something like that, essentially. And it's like, I disagree with that. I watched it on, like, my, I watched it on cable the first time, and I, I thought it looked like garbage. And then I, I went and watched it I, I streaming on HBO Now or Go or whatever service I have, and it looked amazing. And again, it was just like, oh, just turn up the brightness. And good to go. Someone has a question. Is a 5820K system good for $300? I think at this point in time, it's a little bit overpriced. And that's because of the barrier of entry for Ryzen 6 core systems. 
you can get a Ryzen 1600 or, uh, sorry, a Ryzen 2600 with a pretty decent motherboard for about $210. Um, and you're on a platform that is just a little bit more modern. It has some more amenities. Maybe it has USB-C uh, 3.1. Maybe it's got uh, a little bit of, of extra stuff there. Um, the 5820K is a great processor. It will overclock higher, but I don't think it's worth 90 more dollars for that for an X99 platform than it is for a B450 or X470 platform. Um, so honestly, if it was like 250, I'd be more apt. 300 is a little high. Um, if you were on a, was that the 6850K, 6850X, whatever the whatever the the next leap in the eight core was, uh, that I think is worth about the three to four hundred dollars for the full platform. So we're talking motherboard and CPU, um, because that is going to be a better platform than the Ryzen platform. When you get down to six core, I don't think there's much of a performance gap. Um. <sighs> Yeah, 5820K, I'd, I'd, I'd go $50 less. I'd offer $250. Uh, listening to this episode, I realize how old I'm getting. I apologize. Sorry. Sorry, bro. Sorry. Uh, that's probably it. Yeah. I think that's a good place to leave it. Uh, did you see Linus Tech Tips plan to do a four VR racing cockpit controlling FPV racing cars on uh, track at LTX? I did see that. It's something that's intrigued me for quite a while. Uh, I waited in line for like 40 minutes to try this same thing at CES and the line never got any shorter and I didn't get to try it. Uh, they had uh, uh, a very similar setup at, at, uh, at CES this year where they had uh, uh, FPV goggles plus uh, uh, racing controllers. And they had a, a multi-level, three-dimensional rise and fall track set up with some RC cars. I so wanted to try that because that's been oh, on my list yeah. for quite a while. Um, I didn't get to try it. I think it's exciting. I think it'd be really fun to try out. Uh, I considered jumping up to LTX this year. Uh, it's just not going to work out with my schedule as it sits, as I still have a full-time job to worry about. Um, and it's just on a weekend that doesn't work for me. But uh, I will. I will commit to being at LTX 2020. How's that? Bold. So, bold. Bold claims. Bold claims here on Craft Computing, Talking Heads. Um, but, you know, that that is totally something that's in my wheelhouse. I, I am a huge sim racing fan. And, yeah, if you can get me a VR rig on an RC car with a remote control, oh, hell yeah, I'm in heaven. So. Anyway. Uh, oldest playing Frogger on a Commodore 64. Yep. Yep. Uh, I played Frogger on a 2600. Uh, and I remember playing the original Ninja Turtles on the NES. I played Morrowind on a Commodore 64 monitor. Uh, you played Dagger. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I just used the monitor. You played Morrowind on the monitor. Yeah. Okay. I just used the monitor. It was a good monitor. Yep. Uh, I played the original Wolfenstein, uh, on a Macintosh LC2. It was not nearly powerful enough to play it. It was about 12 megahertz or so. And so I had to play it. So I had the 12-inch 256-bit color screen, or 256 color screen. Sorry, bit just rolls off the tongue anymore. 256 color screen. Uh, and I had to lower the window down to about this size to play the <laughs> sign. So 12 inches is not that big already. I had to cut it down to that. So I remember sitting like on my keyboard doing this number playing Wolfenstein. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for yeah. episode 79 of... I almost said episode 19. Episode 79 of Talking Heads. I'm always there for the nines. That's right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It's a lot of fun. We do this uh, weekly on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, anything else? Any closing thoughts? Follow Rhett on Twitter at Rhett is awesome. Also at Game Devs Quest. Do it. Let you can uh, check it. out his uh, his little side hustles that he that he does, and yeah. uh, we teach people how to make games. That's right, from time to time. In, encourage you to make games, no matter what your skill level is, which is uh, a great encouragement to have. So definitely check out Game Devs Quest. You can find that by following Rhett on Twitter at either Rhett is Awesome or Game Devs Quest. Links are down in the description. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing, and uh, as always, we'll see you next week. Later, guys. Bye.